Hello and welcome to the CTV show. Today is April 15th, 2018. The weather, it is drizzly and cool. The Dow. 24,360. <sighs> My weight, 162. Welcome to the show. My name is Evan the Mayor. That is Brian the Levy. I hope everybody did their taxes. Oh, yeah. It's tax day. It is literally tax day on a yeah, Sunday. I'm the tax man. I'm not. I don't know the... You I don't ass- know the first thing about taxes. I assume I do my taxes. <laughs> I hand my father a W-2s every year. Yeah, you can do the 1040 EZ and not have to worry about anything. I think tax day is the 17th this oh, year for some okay. reason. My, my Jew accountant father does it for me. Were, were you saying something about... Uh, it must be nice to be just like 160. Oh, I've been going... H A M full steam I'm at like, the downtown Planet Fitness, I, baby. I've easily got like two small toddlers on you. <laughs> oh, I'm derailed myself. So I, I know. I think starting this week, I'm back. I'm back in the gym. Should we form a gym pact? No. 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 You don't have the money to to participate in a gym. Pact. Uh, yeah, I don't gamble. <laughs> Like, I have to win it's, that, and I don't want to do that. No, there is no winning. It's You You can only lose. You either get your money back, or you lose your money. What, what's the, I mean... The premise it? is five of us, say five people, we all Venmo me, 100 bucks, 40 bucks. And Send it to Michael A. Wood Jr. Yeah. <sighs> we'll get there. We we're not there yet. Uh, Tease. Yeah. I haven't even done top of the show plugs. Anyway, uh, so let's say... I don't theory, think we said hi to Casey yet. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, we did. Oh, did we? Okay. Didn't you just ask me if I had? To, I was trying to say something. Okay. <laughs> did we say hi to Brian? I don't even... Yeah, no, that's what, that's what we derailed immediately. Uh, anyway, anyway, you you everybody Venmo's forty bucks to one person, and they all have to provide proof that they've been to the gym like five out of seven days or four out of seven days. It would probably require a Fitbit. Um, I, I'm more willing to join in a tontine than I'm willing to join in one of those. Right, because all you have to do is stay alive. <laughs> yep. Mm. And I'm going to outlive everybody. That's the joke. All right, guys. Top I'll, of the show. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm in. A gym pact? I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I, in fact, uh, all right, if we're fuck. D- f- fuck further it. derailing, I was actually going to make the announcement procl- proclamation, Casey. I was going to hand you $100 in cash. Mm. And if... For the next episode, I cannot provide proof that I've been to the gym four or five out of seven days of the week. Then you get to keep the no, you get to keep eighty percent of the money. You can give him twenty. Okay, I like this. <laughs> what? He's just gonna waste some of that fucking baby. But he's the <laughs> <laughs> got diapers to buy. Right. Mm. Anyway, top of the show plugs, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for participating, being a patron, a true patriot, if you will. For clicking through that Amazon affiliate banner, I have noticed a huge spike recently. Uh, we did get a tweet from one at Ben Apocalypse, so a major True Patriot award to you, sir, for buying all kinds of things. What did he buy? Uh, I'm not going to say. That's that's private and confidential. I'm Condoms, not, I'm not... got it. <laughs> Butt plugs. But... <laughs> that's My... what uh, Tom Likas used to do on his show. He would like yeah, talk about like, re- top Well, yeah, There are a couple price. of podcasts that do that. Like They'll read off what everybody's ordering, but I know that the number of people ordering things is less than 10. So, well, I mean, at... half of it's probably Casey buying like... Diapers. Di- yeah, diapers. <laughs> diapers. At, at Ben Apocalypse is a cowboy, and he caths, so he bought catheters. Say what? I'm a cowboy and a cat. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, it's it's a commercial that runs on Fox News. John, oh. o- John Oliver hit it uh, a couple of times. It's a good reference. Everyone else loved it. I so okay. when I go to the gym. Okay, top of the show plugs are over. Coming up on the show, we've got some fast and loose Baltimore topics on the second half, and in the first half, we've got a report about my trip to Philly yesterday. Oh, I got to do one thing real quick. Oh, because I keep getting yelled at. Oh. 
So doing what the wedding planning, right? Yes. So Caitlin's like, oh my god, like she sent out like all these nice things to her bridesmaids, and she's like, oh, have you done that yet? Like told your groomsmen they're groomsmen. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't. So Casey, whoops, do me a favor, don't feel bad. Hey Evan, will you be my groom? One of my groomsmen. <laughs> sure. Thanks. All right, great. <laughs> Just had to get that out of the way. So it's gonna be me and Greg and who? Uh, my well, I you know, still gotta ask Greg. Uh, but my <laughs> friend, my friends Kevin, Dustin, and, and uh, David of Arbor now. Uh, so Dave, he's the only other person I've asked. His grandmother died, oh. so we were sitting at his shiva house, and I kind of just did that same. I point, I just, I was <laughs> like, poke, poke. I'm like, hey, uh, groomsman, and like a couple <laughs> of our buddies were sitting there. My sister was there, and she's and like, they're like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, but only because they hadn't seen this yet. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, very, very sentimental moment. Moment just captured on audio. You know, I just have to get these things done. Like this planning, uh, Caitlin. Was... Quite, quite frankly, Brian, I would have assumed that I would be, would have been in the wedding party. Uh, yeah. It, well, I would have done that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that just sets yourself up for disappointment. Uh, you know, if if it had not been the case, if it were were uh, you know like oh only people I've known from childhood type of thing, I wouldn't have been angry or anything. I just kind of no, figured I mean, that would be the case. But, but it's kind of and this is what she said to me is like, who are the people that you have to spend like eight hours with alone? I'm like, okay, that seems like a good five people. Uh, <laughs> so you know, it's it, it's it's wonderful. Thank you for standing next to me. Well, I married my best friend. Uh. Caitlin sat there stuffing uh, Save the Dates into envelopes last night, uh, and I didn't touch a single one. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real team player. My father has yet to get the uh, addresses I need for him. She is not thrilled with the Levy men. Yeah, Brian, um, you, you don't have a whole lot going on in terms of, like, your schedule, right? So you work at a comic book store. I work forty hours you a could, week. You could be stuffing envelopes while standing That's there it? at the the, uh, the old. <laughs> Shut up, Casey. <laughs> uh, all right, enough of this. Uh, hey guys, my... Casey is invited to my wedding, so like, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, I... I wasn't like ha- planning a party, asking someone to be special at my party, that... and then not like inviting Casey. Honestly, to... it would have been great for the show. If you... <laughs> <laughs> it would be great. All right, was... enough of this podcast banter. Oh yeah, some people don't like podcast. <laughs> some banter. people do not like podcast banter. They would have missed all of that. So let's uh, let's talk about what's going to be on the show today. Before I was rudely interrupted, sorry. Top stories from Baltimore. Actually, they're all quick, so don't worry about that. We've got a little recap of my trip to Philadelphia. Does that count as banter? Ban- banter? No, I think that's a topic. And a uh, subsequent amuse bouche. That's French for funny mouth. Uh, for the other people on the show to taste. Uh, and amuse bell, funny girl. And we will be uh, talking about a former guest of the show. One Michael Wood, the deep junior. Dive. What? I said deep dive. Yeah. It's, it's like, be... man, how long ago was that? It was like t- three years? The episode number was 113. Long time ago. While uh, he was in the zeitgeist. and But so still two years into the podcast and s- still four years ago. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that uh, uh, it was that long ago. It was like, was it l- Late in the game, when Dennis had already left and come back, or what? Was... Uh, we, were, we recorded at Dennis's house. <laughs> it was at house. Studio D. Yeah. Oh, did you guys see that Dennis posted in the uh, Fam Zone this week? Hi, Dennis. Ooh, yeah. Routine plug for the CTB Fam Zone. Denny Ex- Extreme. Uh, this is a group on Facebook in which people get free things. You get free things just for being a Fam member of the CTB. Fam, free movie tickets, free DVD, Blu-rays, and some other stuff. So you know, we'll, we'll fam join our fam zone. Please, please join our fam. And zone. where we solicit you to send uh, free stuff to <laughs> Clark's <Correct>. Corner. <laughs> oh yeah, we like snacks. Anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing today. And before we do that, let's talk about Philadelphia. I went there yesterday. Born and raised. Nope. I went there yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I went there yesterday. It was a day trip. We left at 10 in the morning. We got to the Reading Terminal Marker by noon. For so you, you drove all drove the way. Drove an hour and 45 minutes, period. Flat. It was a perfect drive. Perfect little trip. Yeah. I, perfect. We, I don't spend enough time in Philly. Yeah. Um, we're definitely going to go again, and I would like to go to the Italian market next time mm. and perhaps roam around and do some more touristy crap. And drinking. Y- yes. That Well, that'll be like the second or third trip. Um, oh, well. My my whole idea was to eat as much food as I possibly could at the Reading Terminal Market. That was a, a dream achieved. 
I've never been there. Well, Casey, need to make, need you to make definitely sure. need to go because it is it is lovely. It is everything that any market in this in this town ought to be. Any of the public markets, mm. it is much better than most of the markets that we have. Uh, All of them <laughs> just has a fantastic selection, um, a robust uh, presence by the Amish community, the Pennsylvania Dutch community that uh, are bakers extraordinaire. They make beef jerky, they make uh, donuts, they make now, was that something cheese. That you had they growing made up? electric fireplaces. No. Oh. <laughs> Did you have experience with like the Amish or the Pennsylvania Dutch uh, uh, growing up? Much? More so when I was living in Southern Maryland than uh, anywhere else. I'm sure you living in oh, Cecil, yeah. Cecil Tucky had a lot of them, but no. When I was living in Southern Maryland, that's when I started to see the, the horse-drawn buggies with the little hazard signs on the back getting in my fucking way, and I had to gah, go around them in my car. A Witness was one of my mom's favorite movies, and I love it too. That's a good movie. Mine too, English. Oh, tis not our way, English. Then smear some ice cream on his face. Regardless, uh, my trip to the Reading Terminal Market bore fruit, and the fruit is what we have before us right now, the amuse-bouche. All right. I've, I took a picture. I posted it to the fam zone already. Oh, good. Uh, okay, so start with the little pretzel sandwiches. I assume so these are Snyder's this? of some kind? They are Snyder's of Hanover, Pennsylvania. Mm. They are brick oven pizza flavored pretzel sandwiches. <laughs> All of this dead air will be edited out. That's fine. That's a high quality combo right there. It's good. That is precisely my take on it. It is a pizza combo. I would, but it's better than a combo. Um, the cheese in the middle can mm-hmm. get dried out, and that cheese is very moist. <laughs> high quality. You just triggered a whole lot of listeners. What's the point? Uh, yeah, I, my thought was after I ate one of those, I was like, Eh. And then I ate two, and I was no. like, "Hmm, now I can't stop eating them." And then I, I, I would snack on these. these yeah, are very and then I ate like nine of them. Um, let's see. All right, so our consensus is delicious. Delicious. Okay, I'm, a, I'm aboard. So I know last week I said that I was going to do a huge expanded uh, show notes blog post. Ran out of time. I was too busy going to the gym, and you know, being cool. Uh, but this time. Two things. I'm going to definitely do this. I will list all of the vendors that have provided these products. And this episode will go up on YouTube for the first time ever. Episode 225 of the CTV show will be on YouTube. Um, can the can the video just be an hour and a half of the picture that I posted <laughs> of this place? Yes. Whatever the title of the episode uh, picture is, that will be the still photo but it'll then you have... have to have like cut in Owen Wilson. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it'll it'll be full of uh, you know links and things like that. Nice. So that'll take the place. Anyway, okay. So what next? The next thing will be the little brown puddle that I put on. Oh, there. Okay. Stick your finger in it. Do a little tasty testy. <laughs> what you are tasting is black cherry balsamic vinegar. Mm. From Holy shit, this is good. Yeah, Tubby Olive, uh, a vendor in the Reading Terminal Market. So, I'm on Master Chef. Uh-huh. It is time for our ice cream challenge. Exactly. I put make you make myself a nice vanilla bean. Yep. And then drizzle some of this shit on. Precisely. And I win the challenge. So they were the. I will say that this per bottle is very expensive. It's seventeen it, fifty it per tastes, bottle. It tastes, but it, it tastes great. Oh. Or so they give you a couple of recipe a recipe card with it that says here's what you should make with this stuff. One of which was uh, a, a recipe for brownies where you substitute this stuff instead of water. And I was like, mm-hmm. that sounds expensive. <laughs> or take it into the bedroom. What? Take it into the bedroom. Uh, lick no. it off a nipple. Lick it off a nipple. <laughs> Look it off something else. <laughs> I don't want to get no balsamic on my bed sheets. <clears throat> um, and do it right. You got to wash those sheets anyway. Then the final idea, which I thought was the best, was a basically you mix th- that stuff with a bunch of garlic and onions and things like that. I, I drink and this. make a uh, and make a sauce that you toss chicken wings in. I wonder if mm. I'd like a little bit more balsamic in there. Like I'm not gonna lie, if I'd ate all, like if everything else was gone, I would just lick the plate. Sure. Okay. Just moving on to the next thing, the cheese. So what kind of cheese piece is this? Of, piece of cheese. That is a bacon ranch cheddar. <laughs> this is the first thing I haven't 
unabashedly loved. <laughs> it's fine. Right. I like some cheese. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I'm not going to turn it down. Right. I don't know I'm going to spend like the like eight or nine dollars for a brick of, brick of this. It tastes the way a dog, to- a, a chew toy smells. Oh, it's t- t- it smells like a, a uh, what do you call them? The Begum strip. I like a good sharp cheddar. Which this is not. Well, I also got a sharp cheddar. I don't want to give it to you, though, because oh, that's for it's me. Good. It's good. It's very good. Well, how do we feel about Colby Jack? It's not a real cheese. <laughs> I like I it. I don't know. I like it, too. <laughs> All these cheese purists out there that say, like, no. so why pepper is jack is oh. not a real cheese. Why isn't it? Because there's a mixture. I, 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 love, pep- yeah, I a, love pepper jack. It's a oh. cheese blend. Yeah, it's fine. It's, um, it's a plush. Uh, oh, I forgot my question. Continue. Okay, moving right along to the pickles. Okay, I'm excited for this. This might be. This is this is where we dial up the heat a little bit. Oh, I might say these are everything. from the donut people. I forget the name, and I apologize for being a terrible host, unknowledgeable about all things. But it will be listed in the show notes. Woo! Holy crap! Yeah, spicy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know I... the the quality of these pickles is no better than like your standard farmers market pickle vendor. But I, you know, I was like, what's hey. the pepper? <clears throat> Uh, it's a blend of red, like your standard red jalapeno, and there's some habanero in there too. So, pick off any of the orange bits there because those are especially. Uh, oh, I popped spicy. I popped both and in, just into my mouth. You popped them. Ooh. Popped them into Ooh. your mouth. Would you like a popper, Mason? <laughs> That's from the bad Silence of the Lambs movie. The Hannibal. Hannibal, you didn't like Hannibal. I saw it in the theater. I kind of enjoyed it. So did I. That was terrible. Eh. All right, it was good. All right, finally we've got that little piece of meat. That is a piece of beef jerky. Ooh. And what's... it is hot and spicy. Okay, what's the flavor? <clears throat> hotter than the pickle. Hot and... Hotter than the pickle. Holy shit. So get ready, baby. Right. Casey, what happened to you, man? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, like, you I... used to be you, tough. You knock up your wife and all of a sudden you can't handle any spice? I just put on like 20 pounds and I just did big old softy. All right, well, what do you think, Brian? You like the flavor? You like the chew? Yeah, it's pretty Ooh. good. Yeah, that was, uh, so of all the beef jerkies... You know when you go to one of those places where they have all the bins of beef jerky, it's all loose, you know, just sitting in their own bin. That's the way I like it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this stuff, uh, most of the other stuff was like $32 a pound, which is actually sounds crazy, but if when you buy a bag of beef jerky, it's generally speaking $2 an ounce. So that makes sense. Uh, this stuff was a little cheaper because it is moist. It is, uh, it's a little more tender and a lot more sort of, uh, it's got more moisture. What we call the MPR, moisture to protein ratio is higher. So, anyway, what do you think? Spicy? Yeah, is it like creeping it. up on you? Spicy. No, it wasn't that spicy. I don't think you yeah, was spicy. for that That's spicy. weird, because I was taking that stuff out last night when I was going <laughs> gallivanting, and uh, everybody I handed a piece to that, too, was like, woo! Well, so I've been drinking that, I've been eating that fucking Deception salsa. Oh, that's right. Your your tolerance is higher. It, it might be right now. Stop, pl- stop plugging those guys. They're not, they're not a sponsor of the show. But I, I don't need... When I find a product I like, which is rare mm. like i just you know i'm just eating that jar you binge a lot. it until you're sick of it and you yeah. throw it away you discard it like a used tampon yeah i'm planning my I'm dinner getting... around their bacon salsa tonight very good i'm getting that like residual like the heat the, 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 the heat second creep. wave yeah the second wave it'll, it'll hit you in. so anyway it after we went to the reading terminal market we went over to the muter mutter 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 Mur- museum which is uh Mur- the place where you can see a whole bunch of skeletons and medical curiosities a lot of babies in jars. A lot of babies in jars. It's the brand new uh, home game for the holiday season. <laughs> babies in jars! <laughs> do, 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 do. Be the first to get your babies in the jars so you can graduate high school. Ew. <laughs> mm. I have not been there, but I would recommend... If you if this, if you enjoyed that, I think you would also like uh, the penitentiary that's up there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, the Haunted House one? Is it, which Eastern, gets, was it Eastern State, I believe? Something like that, yeah. Um, which sounds con- made up. And it does it get not. converted into a, a haunted house yes. at Halloween time. That's, I originally wanted to go uh, last October. So the Mutter Museum, if you've never been, go once. It's 18 bucks to get in. It's not very big, and you, you, you won't ever need to go back again. Uh, one of the coolest things there is a, an ovarian cyst that is about the size of an actual boulder. There is what? a uh, a man's colon that they what, what, removed. What, how, what kind of boulder? 
a medium sized boulder. What is a medium sized boulder? Because when I think of oh, boulder, I'm is this from like... one of these broads who thinks she's like eight hundred pounds, but in reality she has an ovarian cyst the size of a boulder? Yeah, or or she thinks she's pregnant and is like, why is my baby coming? Because mm. most of this stuff is from like turn of the century, pre turn gotcha. of the century. And we were okay, wait. very comfortable as the medical community just, like, keeping stuff, you know, from these dead people that were, had weird diseases. Oh, and, yeah, that only happened in the 1900s. Uh, I don't think it happens a whole lot now. Like, like you what, know what? They you got to get – first of all, you have to get consent. And how about this? They don't need, they don't need it anymore because they got that Henrietta Lack shit, <laughs> and that is all they ever needed. Yeah, the halo cells. Mm, they and, are and remember, good. that happened in the 60s or 50s or whatever, so. Yeah, well, now she's immortal. She has inside her Blood of Kings, yeah? It's actually, oh, I want to. Talk... The... You know what? When we establish a Patreon that will make about ten dollars a month, I'll do an episode about Hela cells because it's an interesting, like, it's an interesting discussion about transhumanism because these are cancer cells. They are technically from Henrietta Lacks, but they're cancer. And the debate is: Is cancer you? Well, your body says it is, but we say it's not. Do you know where I'm going with this? No, you know where you're going, huh? I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. So is this a new person? Is this not really Henrietta Lacks? It's 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 the debate is essentially is cancer you or is it other? Here's what there is no debate about. They should have asked her and she should have profited from it. Well, she died. Um, her family. So she could have. have made a whole lot of money. Yeah, no, I think Hopkins did give them money. I don't know. I don't remember. But it is one of those, yes, one of those sort of like weird things. We're, we're, we're intractable in our in our uses use of these cells, even though we have others that are. I'm sure somebody good. in the fam zone can tell us. I can tell us because I'm a fucking scientist. No, not about, about whether or not she made not money anymore. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, one of them read the immortal. Not anymore. <laughs> one of them read the immortal life of Henry Lacks. We mm-hmm. have it. Okay. Bad people, I think. Okay. All right, continue. Uh, I don't. I forget what were we talking about. <laughs> Oh, the Mutter Museum. Go there once, and then the next time I go to Philly, yeah, we'll do this other stuff, and that's it. That was my trip to Philly. Bing, bang, boom. Great day. Did you have fun? Oh, great time. Did you see the Liberty Bell? We did not. Uh, It is smaller than you think it is. Yeah. I I, I saw it for the first time recently, and I was really underwhelmed. Yeah, the Mona Lisa is like two inches. So it's important to me. I'm one of those people who say you can only talk shit about America. If you do the American things, like I dragged my friends to Plymouth Rock, I dragged uh, them to the Dealey Plaza. You know, I like going to see things like um, uh, the Liberty Bell. You know, I like doing that historical stuff. This is tiny. I think I've seen like bells in Baltimore. In the I, I think the, the 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 take home message for me was how important it is going forward for me to a continue to go to the gym and b uh, do these little day trips that get me the fuck out of Baltimore. Uh, it's good for your mental health. Yes, very. Uh, you get a life. You know, I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> I think that's what you're saying. It's like, Stand oh, it's in important. the place yeah. where you are. <laughs> Remember that show? Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Chris Elliott. Uh, it, I think what you're saying is it's important for you to feel like a complete person and going to the gym and like yeah. having day trips. I loved it. Gettysburg. Let's fucking do Gettysburg. Williamsburg. No. Williamsburg. No, Williamsburg's four hours away. Gettysburg is an hour, and it's got all the battlefields. And Williamsburg, and we camp. We'll talk about Williamsburg. We, we <laughs> no, so Williamsburg is definitely on the table for this summer. Okay. Uh, all right. Before we get to the next topic, which is going to be former guests, or is that going to be second half? Of the show? No, that's second, second half. half. Yeah. Second half. Second half. Yeah. Let's run through our quick ones and then save the. Or little, little, little. Second okay. Half. Well, the the other thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that I booked a mystery vacation. I know. Do they tell you what? So, uh, t- explain this, and then I have my questions. Go. This is entitled Pack Up and Go. It is a service where you uh, answer a little questionnaire. You set a budget. You uh, pick a preferred method of travel. Oh, what was your preferred method of travel? Plane. Oh. I don't want to take a bus. I, I, would want, have said, I don't want to drive myself. Train. I want to do a train. Yeah. Ooh, I, I want to I do like, the train. I don't think that was an option. I, I would have to look at it again. Because gonna, they'll send you to Cleveland or something. Um, right, exactly. Oh, oh, wait, we haven't explained what it is. So anyway, and then they send you someplace you don't know where it is. Correct. You get an email a week in advance that says, here's what the le- the weather is going to be like in your mystery destination, and here are some potential clothing items you ought to pack, or whatever else they recommend, and then you get an envelope in the Cramp-on mail. Crampon shoes. Yes. <laughs> you're oh, going I, to a glacier. Oh, I'm going to a glacier. How, oh, what if you're pissed? <laughs> well, that's you know what I'm. I had I have to be sort of like totally zen about it and be like whatever. Uh, 
So you're like Jim Carrey in Yes Man. Yes. Yes, and then they yes. say that, So you're going on a mystery <laughs> vacation. We, we should just get those two words out. Mystery yes, vacation. mystery vacation. So you get an, an envelope in the mail a couple of days prior to leaving. It tells you where to go, and I'm assuming for me it's going to be BWI at 7 in the morning. And then when you get to the airport, you open your envelope, and it says, you're going to bleh. Oh, but so you don't wait. know till you're at the airport. You're not supposed to open the envelope. You could cheat and open the envelope a few days prior. Um, I am not going to do that. What, what kind of clothes did you say you want to wear? I didn't say that. It, it basically just tells – it says, like, what are some things we definitely need to know about you in terms of, like, what you like to I do. I love Disneyland. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love Disneyland. No, and, and then it's, like, name three to five places that you explicitly well, – Okay, so what was your answers? Uh, well, I said I love Asian food. Um, You're going to San Francisco. No. Well, how much money did you spend? So the minimum budget for an individual to go on one of these excursions is a thousand bucks. Oh! So I set my budget at eleven hundred bucks. Is it is it all inclusive? Are you paying for drinks? It is not. It is just travel and accommodations for eleven hundred dollars. That's not like, bad though. That's I about could, right. It's not right. I oh, know. I said that's about right for an individual. Sure. Yeah. Because I'm not sharing. I'm not sharing a hotel with anybody. And if you were, and if you wanted to go by train, it'd be cheaper. Right, but I don't. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but I wouldn't be old timey. Like, where the hell would you want to go on a train from Baltimore, New York, Toronto? Woo, New York, Toronto. Uh, I know it's all Can domestic. Do Does it's Amtrak fun. go to Toronto? No, I'm so, it, all the destinations are within. I want to go on like a steam engine. Like, I don't want to do where would I want to go uh, by train? San Francisco. Can you get uh, to Nashville by train? Oh, maybe, maybe. But I think it'd be fun. Spend twelve hours on a train, like make friends. I, is it a group trip? No. He's thinking that so like you're the, by yourself. Yes. How are you gonna get laid? I don't know. Like, that's the that's one of the Brian. But I think you, everyone in the room, knows what kind of, including the producer, knows what kind of uh, winter I had, and I was like, I just want to, I got to do something. Yeah, you need to bang a stranger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, it's impossible to get anyone to agree to go on a trip like this. With you, well, but that's why, like, this would be cool if this was like an outward bound or whatever. Like, like that's why. The, uh, listen, it's end, outward bound, but from a dick. Oh, a, end of the summer. Listen, uh, now that you're a groomsman, <laughs> get on uh, figuring out how to do an adult summer camp for the end of the summer. What for who? Bachelor party. Is that what you want to do? I, I just thought of it. Almost. Well, we can look that up. Yeah, I mean that is a thing. That is a thing. It is a thing. Right, so, Wait, but, end of the summer. Yeah. Of this summer? Yeah. But I'm going to Hawaii. Well, I'm getting married at the end of in April, so it's going to either going to be – end of the summer is what we're looking at, I think. Well, how, how about like mid-fall? We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. This, this can be done. This can be done off here. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would want a group. I would want you know to know that I that I would at least be able to have dinner with like five people at the end of the night. No, I, I agree. Um, I would so prefer – cruises are kind of good. Uh, right. I know cruises are good, but – well, not only that, but – Or at least a hotel with a pool. Oh, my God. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do a CTB fam zone cruise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, like, five people do a live podcast in our cabin. <laughs> not in the cabin, at the dinner table. Yeah. Well, it's like you're <laughs> rocking back and forth. So, but here's the thing. So, if you are go- – so, when are you going? June 4th until the 7th, and then as soon as I land, I go off to St. Mary's College for Alumni Weekend. Okay. So June 4th, it'll be summer. That's a Monday, yes. Well, I don't know if it'll summer, be summer. Yes. Uh, it's just barely summer. Right. So, you know, you'll have a pool wherever you're going, right? Uh, what, well, did you say, what, what five places did you say you didn't want to go? I said I don't want to go to Chicago, uh-huh. New Orleans, or Savannah. Because you've, you've been, been there. Because I've been to all of those places. Okay. That makes sense. See, I I, I would be slightly disappointed if they sent me to New York because it's like I could just drive there. You know, I know people there. I bet you they send you to San Francisco. Th- it, that is not a three day trip, Brian. Sure it is. Because no, it takes not. you a day to get there and a yeah. day to get back. Yes. Oh, so oh, so you're flying on the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and then the seventh you come. You fly back. out the, the morning of the fourth. You get there within three to four hours. I'm assuming. So you have at least that day to do stuff. Some stuff. I, they're going to send you to Nashville. It's three days, two nights. They're going to send you to Nashville. Or Denver. Austin? Austin would be cool. 
I don't know. Anyway, enough I about like, this. I'm, I'm really they're sending you to East St. Louis. We <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> it's murder capital of the United States. Windows up. <laughs> I, I kind of like not have idea. a car. Huh? I think I think uh, sometime after the baby's born, like I kind of want to do something like that by yourself or no 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 with with the wife. But like right. just go. She no, would re- she would absolutely love. The, like if I told her this, she'd be like, "When are we going?" Yeah, the the reactions that I have had when I tell people that I'm doing this are almost universally, "Oh my god, that sounds so amazing! I really want to do something like that." Tell me how it is, because they, you know, nobody wants to be the first person to do it. So, that's are you me. allowed to take a group trip? Yes, with five people. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you suggesting a CTV fan zone? Ooh, excurt. Ooh, writers trip. What a writer's trip! Writer's trip? Yeah, whatever. You know, uh, producer's oh, oh, trip. Uh, yeah, no, no. Th- 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 I was now changing it to bachelor uh, uh, party. But yeah, right. Whatever. Writer's retreat. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I mean that sounds fun. I mean it sounds fun. Like I said, I think maybe I'd like it if if it was a if I was alone at your age, I would like a group of strangers with me. Well, you know, just it, because there's going is, to be this is Evans live laugh love. Guys, it, it actually is not. It's just kind of like I'm not even going to say it's me getting out of my comfort zone. It's just kind of I'm so good on my no, own. Like but, I'm perfectly fine with interacting with strangers. I do it miss, all the time you're in missing Baltimore. The point. This summer, this summer, Catherine Heigl <laughs> and, and <Evans>. Tate Diggs <laughs> are on mystery vacation. <laughs> what's so the, what's the theme song for that? I don't have one. All my life <laughs> is changing every day. <laughs> In every possible way, she'll learn how to love. And now I've opened Stop up trying to plan door. everything. Can't you just fall in love without a plan? So anyway, right, this, yeah. this summer. Pack up and go. That is the name of it. Google it. It will also be in the extended, extended show notes. The reason that the movie's not called Pack Up and Go is because I don't want to have to pay them for it. So it's Mystery Vacation. <laughs> mystery Vacation. All right, let's take a break. <clears throat> okay. And then we'll get back to it with our, uh, you know, Baltimore topics and show relevant, slightly off topic Baltimore topics. Cool. You know, former guests, that kind of thing. But for now, it is time for the internet sensation. Give me the tray. Sweeping 92Q, it's time for shout outs. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Shout outs. Shout out. Shout out. Did you like that little tack on? I did. I really liked it a lot. (laughs) All right. This is the part of the show in which we take a break and we give mad props, a.k.a. shout outs to persons, places, and things that are improving our quality of life and giving us jollies. My shout out this week is to the Reading Terminal Market in Philadelphia in general. Hey, great time to go. Oh, my Lord. Springtime in Philly. That should be the title of the episode. No. Oh, come on. Remind me to go over the statistics. Yeah. For the last uh, Remember, it's all about... Not trying. Everything is not a contest. Right. I wasn't trying. Get out of my face. Anyway, Philly, I did. I did think to myself as soon as he sent out those stats, Casey. Mm-hmm. It's like, great. He is going to push himself. Like, I am not. <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> I thought I had a few more in there, but apparently not. You apparently, to, you had zero. Go, well, there were two question marks, and uh, they may have been in there because I'll, I... I'll go over the titles and we'll we'll figure it out. Anyway, that is my shout out, Philadelphia. Great day trip. Do it. I Casey. I did uh, the Soul of the City 10K I yesterday. I don't like you. I'm just kidding. Um, that That's kind of my shut up is the constant stream of 5 and 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and 2 and 4 Ks. Mm-hmm. I uh, support you and I'm proud of you, Casey. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. And uh, my shout out is to uh, Charm City Run and they're um, putting on a great event and everybody, all the volunteers and all the police making it a successful event. Where is the, what was the race called where it's like a less than 1K? Uh, oh, enchantment a, under you, the sea. You drink a beer? No. Uh, it's a spit for spat. <laughs> it's it's something a, else. I think Flying Dog puts it on. Uh-huh. Or at least they're like the sponsor of it. And Wait, they raise what's money 1K? For like point, It's point .1K. Uh, it's literally like you, you like run to and the then end you of drink the a beer yeah, and, and, it's, a beer. and then you have oysters. It's to raise money for like oysters. oyster preservation. Oh, okay. I'd rather do that. Okay. Brian? Uh, yeah, I got a few. First off, um, former guest of the show, Quinn Kelly, wrote a nice little column uh, not the normal garbage, like Zillow, you know, like <laughs> reasons to live in Baltimore, but like an actual 10 quirky things you didn't know about living in Baltimore, you know, an actual well thought out, you know, journalistic 
Baltimore is a nice place to live. I, I do feel so. I read that article and I, I felt like it's the the hallmark of the person that's been here a couple of years and has thoughts on Baltimore, but yeah. they love it here. And then when you fast forward eleven years further, you're me, and you're no, just no. like, Ugh. I'm 35 years old. I've I've lived no place else but Baltimore County, Baltimore, my entire life. Sure. You know, the Greater Baltimore Metro is my place. This fucking town sucks. I, I couldn't live anywhere else. I don't think. Um. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know. Like, I, I hate this place. It's like it's crazy. Like even just going to Philadelphia, which I I understand. Like any city has its like really super shitty areas. I was just kind of like, oh man. It's clean here. There's not like a million pounds of fucking garbage and litter everywhere. Uh, no, no, look, look. I, I live in like the clean, uh, not the ritzy part of the city, but like the cleaner, what, the cleaner uh, middle class area of the city. And I still have like a Nazi flag a quarter mile from my house. I mean, sure you know, do, I you, fucking hate this place. And a Confederate flag up until recently, uh, less than a block away from your but house. It's, but it's really nice to see that, you know, people do love this. Like... Baltimore's never going. And now anyway. Casey lives in Dundalk, where those two things are everywhere. Growing up, I had one on my front lawn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Confederate flag, Casey. Wait, wait. The know, Confederate I, flag. Right. Let's be clear. <laughs> Casey's not ready to claim Nazism, no. but the Confederacy he's in. Um, so, okay, so there's that. Um, I watched Star Trek Beyond today. That's the third one. There's this scene where they blow up all these spaceships that they use sabotage in. And I fucking love that. And that's just something that brought me joy to my life today. So that's why I'm shouting that out. And third... A daily affirmation. And, and third, uh, I watched the first episode of Lost in Space on Netflix. It is incredible. From right, the 50s? Watch it. No, the no, no, no. One. There's a new Lost in Space. Oh. It's really... Like, I was texting everybody. Like, it was tense. I had to stop so halfway... So who, who's the mincing pedophile this time? Uh, Parker Posey. <laughs> <laughs> right. I knew it. <laughs> It's it's the chick with the braces from Best in Show. It's Parker <laughs> Posey. So uh, the the first episode was so intense, I had to stop midway through and smoke a cig, and then go back. Is that to watch. like when you lost your breath uh, having intercourse? No, no, no. That was like no. I just had to like take a break. Like it was. I was like scared. Like obviously, like you know, it was all main characters. No one was dying, mm. but like I was still scared. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. forgot, forgot mm. one. Okay, go uh, I've actually been meaning to do this Music's a weeks. long over, but let's do it. Um, a, a new podcast I've been listening to, Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard. Okay. Um. I like Dax Shepard. It's a very, I did not until I started listening to this. It's, I don't know how I came across it. Amazing. Um, the best way I can describe it is I really like Howard Stern's interviews and this is all, this is basically what it is. Oh, just, how it, in the interviews? Basically, it's just yes. That is my favorite famous part. people or others. Yes, it's basically all famous people, all people he knows. You most of the time, it's like he knows them pers- very well personally, and it's just him like interviewing and talking to people that he knows. Are, are Dax Shepard uh, and Kristen Bell a list celebrities or are they B list celebrities? A minus. Okay. Kristen they're, Bell they're is... No, B+. Plus. B+. Plus, a, no. B+, plus, uh, A-. Minus. Kristen Bell is A. He is clearly, like, B. C+. Plus and he, like... But that's the thing I love C. about it. Chips he, was a major motion picture. It, yes, but he talks got about... got panned and made no money. Doesn't yes. matter. It, that, well, that's... He talks about, very frankly, like, his career and how, like... He's like, yeah, I made uh, Without a Paddle, and it made all... Like, compared to its budget, it made a ton of money. Yeah. And then he hasn't really hit it big since then. I like um, both of them. And Very but much. it's it's yeah it's uh, I think it's they a are a li- well at least Kristen Bell is a little overexposed in terms of the commercials and all the commercials of them together and her oh, I like the one that she's sloths. yelling at her imaginary kids right anyway that's enough of that all right now it is time to play what's the bumper whoops that is the wrong song for what's the bumper NBA theme right NBA on NBC the A team. Bum 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 bum. It's now time to play. What's the bumper? What's the bumper? Oh, is it? Oh, I picked it last week. I don't feel comfortable. Casey, what's the bumper? I I got nothing when it comes. You guys are the masters of this, like eighties, mid eighties commercial. It doesn't have to be that. It could be recent. It could be a recent Baltimore commercial. See if you could find a a supercut of Crystal Coons saying, "I'm Crystal Crystal Coons." Coons. (laughs) I could make one. Oh yeah, do that. We're gonna wow you. Yeah. Uh, Question. Huh? Crystal Coons. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) She's a little too bony. Nope. I would. Okay. Uh, the answer is we, yes. We still have not decided on a bumper. Uh, the theme song 
to um, Land of the Lost. The original. Marshall, Will, and Holly the, on a routine expedition. Stop singing the original or the 90s version. The 90s version. Okay. I know I was singing the original. Living but in the land of the lost. Living Wasn't in the land one, of like, the Nickelodeon lost. Nickelodeon at some point? No, it was on ABC. It was Maybe, on you know what? Saturday morning cartoons. I think it might have been on Nick. Because that might have been my only exposure to that. <laughs> you didn't even watch. Casey's like, I don't even watch broadcast television. Just bring me the Nickelodeon. You know what? If I'm feeling really ambitious, no, I won't. I can't. I don't have time. I was going to put together a promo for Ziggy Gets It Wrong. Oh. Okay. But I don't have time. I'll do it during the week. Yeah, growing growing up, we had like the big ass satellite dish. That uh, yeah, you did. That would rotate. Yeah, you but we did. We didn't, so we didn't have bro- any. Was it covered in tin foil? <laughs> uh, well, at one point it broke, and then because the way it worked is like you had like twelve channels on each like band. Uh-huh. Also, so all those kids it would, would play like, on it. It would. It had to rotate. It had yeah. to rotate. Well, it broke and was stuck. Oh so no! So the only things we could get was the Disney Channel and CNN. But it was like well past when I was would actually be interested in the Disney Channel. Like I was late middle school. Hmm. <laughs> Kind of oh, that's what I feel like that was right when I was getting back into the Disney Channel. All right, we are running way late on the first half. Let's go. Time to take a break. We'll Don't. be right back. back from break we got <laughs> we got fast and loose baltimore topics to go through and the uh, and the former guest chat do we want to do that first or the the baltimore stories because i can blow through these in 15 minutes I baltimore think. stories go baltimore stories number one <clears throat> a deal would move baltimore animal shelter to cherry hill to make way for high-tech driving range cherry hill so, Wait, so the driving range is going to be in Pigtown. is it because that's, that's, well, I don't know if that's technically picked. Yeah, it's no, very close. Like, well, we're talking about Barks. We're talking about Barks, the Baltimore a- I, Animal I, Rescue Center shelter. I what is it called? I lived two blocks from Barks. Like, it was very, very close to my house when I was a big town. That's true. You are you were right across Russell from that zone. Yeah. Anyway. You do have firsthand knowledge. I guess we can't really uh, dispute that. <laughs> You're a liar, sir. I, oh, I'm sorry. It was like West Federal Hill. <laughs> right, right, as, the, as it was called on the building of... West Federal Hill. West Federal Hill. Um, Right. So Baltimore, the animal shelter, if they're going to move this thing to Cherry Hill, then you can expect the death of the animal shelter to happen. Um, Or at least an amount of struggle to happen because once you put it over that Hanover Street Bridge, and I apologize to my out-of-state listeners here, uh, this is – Cherry Hill is generally speaking an area that is not as great even as the area that it is in currently – which is generally an industrial blight zone, but now it'll be moving into a uh, residential blight zone. Hmm. Um, a little more crime. It's across a bridge that's falling apart. It's across the water. The traffic isn't. The traffic flow isn't great. But it's not. It's not bad, and it certainly isn't as bad as Russell Street is. But are they being moved, or are they choosing to move? Being moved. <clears throat> How, are, are they a city entity that can be moved? Well, I think they don't own the land. I think they're. I think there's some sort of deal with the city for the space that they're in, and I believe it was. I can't remember exactly how long ago it was, but they the city came in and basically said we want to use this for something else for a in high this tech case, driving range. Yeah, they want yeah, to put some entertainment pro stuff golf thing because you got to remember well, you, you got because um, we need to buttress the Horseshoe Casino, which month over month is seeing like decline revenues in the face of all the other casinos that are in the state and we got hammerjacks going in right there too oh shit the stadiums 
Like, where's there's, Hammer? Wait, there's a new Hammerjacks. You didn't know uh, about this? No. Are you ridiculous? Yeah. Uh, well, we know. In the uh, the right old next uh, to Barks. Par- <laughs> in, in the old Paradox spot. I don't know where that is. You don't know where Paradox? Right is. next to the dance club that's under the overpass. That's very reminiscent of the old Hammerjacks. Is now going to be. I'm stoked. Can we go? The- When's college night? <laughs> I'm not so sure that'll be a thing. I think uh, they kind of like outlawed that in the city. Oh, oh, <laughs> lame. When's ladies' night? I don't know. Well, the same old hammerjack sluts become. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That's so these are okay. These are supposed to be fast. So the BDC, that's the Baltimore Development Corporation, whatever the fuck it's called, found a parcel of this that the city owns in Cherry Hill that officials say would be a good fit for the new bigger animal shelter. And my comment to that is, you will be amazed at how quickly and how. Violent. The, the the response to this location will be bad. Well, it's not the Humane Society's I- idyllic it's not uh, the Humane Society. campus in Reister's Town. Like it's, that is an idyllic campus. It, it, like this is it's Jerry gorgeous. Hill. Yeah, and it's not even the one at the end of Falls Road, which is the other Humane Society. Or that whatever. is the SPCA. The, like yeah, the SPCA. Cherry Hill. I mean, look, people live there every day, and every and things are fine. But it's they do. However, the people that typically volunteer at Barks and adopt animals from Barks will probably show a little resistance to going into Cherry Hill for reasons. Well, then maybe it's important that it's there. Maybe. Maybe it's as important as the most important movie in history, Black Panther. Okay, Mm. sure. Cherry Hill, okay, so this is a dumb question. Cherry Hill is still technically in the city, right? It's It's the city. Okay. Guys, this summer... Catherine, Catherine Heigl, Heigl is and Tay Diggs. It, well, hold on. This one had this one needs to be drawn out. Oh, okay. More. This summer, Catherine Heigl is a young millennial. I mean, at this point, she's like <laughs> seventy five years old. But like, you hey. know, she, Catherine Heigl is a young uh, socialite who has to um, who gets a DUI and has to donate her time <laughs> to uh, the animal shelter the animal that's shelter been relocated in into the into the uh, <clears throat> or, or you know whatever you know Harlem or whatever the fuck. Uh, Tay Diggs is the young community organizer again, also seventy five years old, uh, young community organizer who then says, "You gotta love the kids like you love the animals," and then they fall in love. I call it love at first bite. Oh, nice. Prostatitis. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, Tay Diggs would be a good fit. Tail Diggs is a no, no. It's Tail Diggs. Tay Diggs. Tail Diggs is what I'm naming my next puppy. <laughs> instead of. <laughs> instead Fuck of... you, Brian. That's the title of the episode. I hate you. <laughs> Tail Diggs, my new puppy. Tail Diggs, I'm. <laughs> instead of being a community organizer, he's a mailman. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. All right, Brian, you win. 225. Tally it up. Tail dicks. No, wait. I'm the one that mistakenly said tail dicks. Oh, yeah. Then technically, it's Casey. <laughs> yeah, but I made it the episode title. Like, No. No, you didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Casey gets that one. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Honestly, Casey could use the win. I, I could. Guys, we've begun tallying these things. All right, so so Barks has moved. Should we do this very quick, Tally? Yeah, so yeah, that's the end of the story. Barks is moving. Right, no, here, here's the nut of the story. Moving to Cherry Hill, which is a, sort it's, of a high crime, is it uh, in... very... Uh, uh, hmm? Is it set in stone? No, not yet. I'm saying it's going to be bad for the animal shelter in general because uh, scared racist white people won't want to go to the area. So get but, over yourself, scared racist white people. Correct. Um, all right, so let's do a very quick recap of these episodes of the CTV show. 224, Poop, Water, and Spiders. That's Brian. Yep. 223, Guru Lemon. That's Brian. Yep. 222, The Krispy cream of Athletic Gear. Brian. Yep. 221, A Racist Rainbow. I think... That was Brian. I think that was me. Somebody... I don't remember. It might oh. be one of those circumstances where you said it. We all kind of just did it. Brian repeated it and made it. And we, then we made the song out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic song. Uh, we need to record e- that. We need to put episode two hundred and twenty of Vibranium Diaper Genie. That was me. Oh, that's good. Two nineteen. Martin O'Malley's a cool dude. That's Brian. Yep. Two eighteen. Xylophone. Brian. Oh yeah, that's my safe word. <clears throat> two seventeen. A very Nazified episode. That was me. Uh, two sixteen. A kindler, gentler Blitzkrieg. That was. I think that was you. Was it me? I think so. 
Okay. Well, I didn't know. So that brings my tally up to five. Yeah. I think that was you. Well, I'm just going to – like, We're going for it. Are we taking it from me? Because if so, I'm not into that. It was a question mark. I'd have to, okay, if it was a question, was a question mark, mark, fine. fine. I'm going to have to re-listen to it. Anyway, 215, Talcum Leap. That's that's Brian. All the way. Right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, shit. Now you're up by two. Nice. <laughs> Um, episode 214, The Lost HQ 2 of Roanoke. Oh, that's big. That's you. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of joke that I love. Episode 213, Rinsing with Beer. That was me. And uh, then if you go back to 212, which was I didn't actually do it. It was just entitled Announcements and Predictions. That was the New Year's episode. Okay. So that's where I stopped. Anyway, moving along to the next uh, topic at Just hand. so we all know, quantifiably... I'm the funniest person in the room. Continue. Go. Oh, Thanks. that's not true at all. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> Next. Uh, 2.5 million cubic yards of material are going to be dredged from the Chesapeake Bay shipping channel in an effort to make room for giant boats to and that's bring cars. By, and that's by Mrs. Trash Wheel. Yes, Mrs. Trash Wheel, the bottom feeder, as we call her. Uh <laughs> 2.5 million cubic yards. I don't think people get, wrap their brains around how much fucking stuff that is. So That's 7 million cubic feet of stuff. Yeah, that's – but but that's also like uh, – it's got – it moves three ways, like up to the side. Yes, yes. volumetrically. Yeah. 7 million cubic feet. Yeah, that's a lot of shit. That's a ton of stuff. Like, that's a continent. That's Atlantis. That is that is an island. So, and the reason I bring this up is because I learned from a, a former reporter of the Baltimore Sun and mom to my BFF uh, that Hartmiller Island, outside of your zone now, Casey Dundalk, is mm. a man-made island when they dredged for shipping lanes way back when. And now Pat and Sajak just, lives there. <laughs> yes. They just dumped all that shit, like... And made an island. <laughs> they just dumped it all and made an island. Hmm. And then some trees started growing, and now it's like where all the boaters go to have their little boat parties. Oh, wait, okay. that's not where Pat Sajak lives? No, Pat Sajak lives... Oh, Gibson Island. <laughs> Gibson Island, and... or I think he also... No, 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 I'm thinking of, like, Ted Koppel or some, some newsman has I'll a... Ted Koppel. Anyway. <laughs> so, are they going to make another island, or are they going to add on Good to Good question. I have island? no idea. Um, and, I and who gets naming rights to that? Uh, PSI Net. Oh, okay, but this is in this is in Norfolk, Virginia, so it's really none of our concern in terms of, and it's going to be performed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. But here's here's the thing. Oh, so it's going. This so, is the, so one big rainstorm. It's going to collapse. No, here's this is the plot line to like the the Superman Returns movie. Why? How? How come? Like you know, Donald Trump can't just order the Army Corps of Engineers to go dredging stuff. And be like, oh, we're making new shipping lanes. Uh, we're and gonna, then put a Trump hotel on and it. And then make a new island. <laughs> and sell the Trump, real estate. Trump Island. Yeah. So I believe that's probably in the emollient 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 clause. Nah, eh, whatever. I mean, in, I'm talking emollient. about like when he, Not you know, emollient. he's after president, like, or he just makes his son do it on the. Side. I don't think you're allowed to profit off the presidency. Like oh, that. I, but but well, but he is. I, I, I know. Stopped anybody so far? Uh, important to notice. We know everything's going on, Michael Cohen. I but I just have nothing to say about it. There's also no time. Just right. no time. No time. Uh, no, I saw a really Casey, bad. Casey just had an aneurysm. There, I saw a really bad take in the New Yorker where some guy's like, "This is it. This is the end times of the Trump presidency." And nope. I was like, "Bro, eight more nope. years. Get out of here, or whatever it is. Four more years." Yeah, like, you know, the more I listen to people really talk about the Stormy Daniels interview and how it's completely meaningless, like, because all it, oh, look, all he's got to do is be like. I didn't know these people. Were, I mean, acting on my behalf, but without my knowledge. Yeah. Though what did like, with the exception of now that they've got you know the recordings from his lawyer oh my God. that could. Maybe... I just can't. I just can't. You know what? I was I was hurt so bad in November of 2016. I'm really only interested in the trade war. Oh, we're so fucked. Oh, it's so fascinating. So fucked. All right. Now, if you want to listen to a really good podcast, uh, I mean, perennially good, Planet Money. They just did an episode about the tariffs. Ooh, and, uh, I need to check that out. Well, what was interesting is I didn't know this, and God, we're really off topic. Uh, that the the list of tariffs on both sides do list. Okay, so China is like, uh, all right, well, we've got this list of fruits and nuts that are being imported from America, and we're going to levy a tariff on that. That's going to figure into this fifty billion dollar, you know, counterattack that we're proposing if your proposals go through. <laughs> 
what they did was they listed a bunch of imports that we don't we don't export these particular items to America. They just kind of like made it up. They padded the list, mm, okay. <laughs> which in ter- it, uh, included durian fruit, which smells. It smells bad. Oh, and we are doing a taste test of that at oh, some it, point. It tastes delicious, right? Apparently. Um, so anyway, uh, it's grown in Puerto Rico and a few other places in the you know purview of the United States, but we are not allowed to export it. So how are you going to tariff something that can't be exported to China? Anyway, and we did the same thing, apparently, a bunch of stuff that does not really come. But, th- so, there's a, but so it's also of... the fact that it ignores, it ignores the fact that, yeah, we're trying to hurt the Chinese government, which has an outsized um Are presence. we, though? Is that the, yeah. is well, that the uh, idea? So China owns all of its companies, right? China, the state, has a piece mm. of all of its companies. So when you tariff Chinese steel, you, you are hurting the Chinese government. The difference is is that when China then tariffs um, you know, American farms— they're not hurting America. They're hurting its citizens. No, that's true. Uh, so there's especially a when I, I – well, one of the portions of the episode was about how they're they're going to put a huge tariff on imported pork from America. Right. And they, they buy most of the, the trotters and the hooves and the right. tails and this and that. The stuff that we don't want to eat. So anyway, we're, we're, we're off topic. We are. Anyway. National shit's check happening. We know. Comey's an asshole. Oh, what a hot take. Cock. <laughs> Next uh, headline. Hold on. In Baltimore's high crime zones, an experiment in government starts to yield results. And I really kind of want to dive a little deeper into this topic, but maybe for another day. I am simply going to read what this says because a friend of the show, Luke Broadwater, who's been on not in a long time, but he says as th- as uh, he says as follows. Streets are looking a little cleaner in uh, southwest Baltimore. Fewer weeds are threatening to take over. More lights are fixed. Our increased patrols seem to have reduced the trafficking that was going on. Drug trafficking. For the most part, it's working. In Baltimore's most crime-ridden zone, city officials are conducting an experiment in government. They started last year by targeting four small, deeply troubled areas to be flooded with more police patrols and city services. They called them transformation zones. At first, then rebranded them as violence reduction zones. They've since added three more zones, bringing the total to seven. Can- Ugh, Kathy. <laughs> Casey, does this remind you of anything? Uh, I feel like this was a plot in The Wire. <laughs> You're right about that, but you know what it reminded me of? What's that? The Iraq War. Mm-hmm. Occupy and hold. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, the U.S. Shock and all. No, not shock and all. The military would basically occupy an area, secure it. And then hold it. And then hold it. And this is what we're doing, but we're rebranding it as you but know, with police transformation officers. zone. With with Baltimore City police officers. And... But it's a really cool photo gallery with this article because it, it shows like police officers painting buildings and things like that. And Which is odd. Like, it's you know, going there. going future time when we talk about former guests of the show, this man was talking about community policing. And this is exactly what they're starting to fucking do. And I'm like, good. This is an experiment? Like, no, it exists. We Why, why aren't we doing it? Because we've spent so many years in the war on drugs mindset where the, the people in the city. Tough on crime. Yeah. We're, we're, so, you know... It's, one of the things that worked really well with the Iraq war, one, not a whole lot, but one of the things is I never got the feeling that we were fighting the citizenry, like the way that you got the feeling in Vietnam, right? So like, you, so in the war on drugs... We were welcome in Iraq, kind of. That's, Briefly. <laughs> that's what the picture that was painted anyway here. I'm sure it's very different. I don't fucking know. Part of the problem with the war on drugs is treating everybody who lives in a neighborhood as if they are the enemy. Changing that attitude 30 years later is an experiment. 40 years later, you know, if it's 2018 and let's say the war on drugs started in the late 70s, you know, it's or early 80s. It's a change in that behavior. It is an experiment saying, guys, what if we're fucking nice to these people? What if? Yeah. What if we stop shooting them, putting the boot on their neck and actually provide them with city services that they're in theory paying for? Yeah. Uh, It's the idea that they're not fucking taxpayers is insane. 
Well, I don't know that it is or it isn't. I mean, well, you know what I depending mean. Depending on which neighborhood. But okay, so continuing, each zone gets several dedicated police officers <laughs> called neighborhood coordination officers. <laughs> so they're coordinating the neighborhoods. You know, they whenever we talk, good. okay, like, so no, no like it's, it. this is a wonderful idea. Don't get me wrong; I'm not poo poo pooing on this idea. I think it's fantastic. It immediately sprung to mind that the cops ought to, or maybe the city ought to hire these people and entitle the job neighborhood coordinator and he, basically just walk around pointing at people like pick that fucking trash up like you know just oh, like no, no. not literally but encouraging people teaching people how to take care of their surroundings here's, like painting the building you know like beautifying do, coordinating here's right a question neighborhood I have. coordinator you know how there's like coordinate neighborhood volunteers you know how there's fire stations in like every neighborhood not and like every neighborhood. well but you know what I mean. <laughs> anymore but there's a, like a lot of them like they're 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 all over the place. Sure. Well, and like they just kind of sit outside and like hang out where there's no fires uh-huh. and like kind of get to know the people in their neighborhood. Sure. I'm thinking really of the one in Federal Hill, but like that's the best example I have. Okay. But I feel like they all do this. That sure. one's me. Oh, never mind. Why? I mean, first off, it's because the scenery is great. That's why they sit outside. Uh, all day. yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, why don't chauvinist? Why don't they have like station an officer, a police officer? To hang out with the fire guys and just like sit outside with them all day and like become part of the neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Like, like uh, you know, you don't have to have a precinct house, but you do got to like, you know, what if what if there was like in any neighborhood, like an up, like you knew who the cop in the apartment was, you knew who the cop in the house was, and like you were like felt comfortable with them, you know? Sure, absolutely. I don't think they are. I think that's one of the problems with having most of your police force. Living not out of, living yeah. in the state. Yeah, I think you just described community policing. Uh, you know what? And I'm a dummy, right? Look, look at the shit I invented. I'm sure there's like, I'm sure there's an actual name for it, and like studies done about how I'm right. But like, I'm I'm just a dummy. Mm-hmm. Like, I just wish, you know, I I, I'm gen- I am very much pro police. I very much wish that I didn't feel like I had to be on the side where I disagree with them as much as I do right now. So, you know, and as much as the the echo chamber that is the Baltimore City Voters Group on Facebook shits all over Catherine Pugh for not being, you know, progressive or hiring PR people for $150,000 a year, blah, blah, blah. She has put $1.6 million into the city's budget for two rapid response crews from the DPW to clean up areas in rapid succession you know like one of these neighborhoods where they want to focus on it as a the green zone the yeah. baltimore yeah, yeah, green yeah. zone the baltimore green zone like they this this rapid fire team comes in and just picks up all the garbage and then cleans 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 this summer on tlc Catherine this... heigl and tay Diggs. no uh, are... uh, oh. i was gonna say it's the ba- it's the baltimore beauty project where oh. you know like Ex- we've got three days to turn this vacant into a home extreme makeover city edition I like yeah it. Title of the episode. <laughs> no, Casey, you've got that one. Uh, three more housing inspectors to enforce code violations and extended hours at local rec centers. Uh, that's the. I think that's like that slid in as like the most important point that you know SRB who historically closed those things. Now yeah. we're talking about extended hours. Like, yeah, no shit. Yeah, no shit. Get the kids in there to play some fucking games so that they're not like getting you know drawn into really bad situations. Otherwise, off the streets and out of the pool halls, right? Sure. Well, come on, pool halls. Come on. It's that's what public schools. Ooh, are shout out to the upstairs bar at Spoons in Federal Hill. They have two pristine pool tables. Oh, mm. great. Pristine Edge. I don't know. Jeez, so this is it part of Spoons or is it a different edge huh? deal together? It's a still no same. Building. It's just the upstairs part of the building. Anyway, they got a liquor license. If the appro- approach can improve the most neglected parts of Baltimore, the theory goes, officials should be able to create a domino effect that will spread the transformation outward to neighboring areas and eventually the city as a whole. Who oh, would have thought? It's like the block by block project in Harlem. Well, when you were in the toilet, uh, I was saying that it reminded me of no yes, the that. Iraq War. The uh, uh, yeah, the Green uh, Zone. Remember how I made the reference to that thing I wasn't here for? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> If you can drive, Shh. if you can drive crime down in the most violent areas, says the mayor, you can drive crime down all over the city. But there is a concern as police and pol- politicians increase patrols and offer more needle exchanges and rec center programs. They acknowledge some of the crime they're suppressing is simply moving to other parts of the city. Fine, yes, 
We're pushing it around. We're shuffling it around, but it gets diluted in the Welcome process. Welcome to city management. Yeah. Yes. You put out one fire, you know, a garbage fire somewhere, another one's going to pop up. It's like whack-a-mole. Yes. Ooh, it's like the future. There are trash can fires everywhere. Yeah. Remember in the 90s when dystopian futures, all just, trash can all, fires. all trash can fires. Yep. Barrel fires, well, trash can you, fires, dumpster fires. Mr. Robot, they have that in, <laughs> yeah. starting in like yeah, season they, two, like they just don't know what to do with the trash, so they should start burning it. Um, inside the seven zones that currently exist, homicides are down by 30% from the same period last year, and data collected by the city's revamped city stat, now called the Office of Sustainable, Sol- oh God, I don't like this name, Office of Sustainable Solutions. Shows services in the seven zones have increased in some cases dramatically. All right, so it's going well. Yes, but this is just seven neighborhoods. Okay. There are like 196 neighborhoods in the city. Let me tell you something. Journey of a thousand miles starts with one single step. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, You know, and I've always looked at like the the progress that arguably if we've made any progress. We did 11 days without a murder. (laughs) And like think of how good that was. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, like I feel like it lowers our like stats all for the entire year. No, it, it does, and not only that, but crime in general in the city is down like thirty percent. Like yeah, so like look at the like so the assholes who are complaining about like you know oh I wouldn't go down there like fuck you like we're getting better help us right. help us help seventy three murders this year or so far. Uh, yeah, which that's is, low. It's really low. Well, but we're going into summer. We're going into the summer. Yeah, we haven't it, even hit August yet. What was it like two years ago when like winter was just like unusual? There's a high number of murders for winter time. Yeah, it so. happened. So, <clears throat> and this is so. It's something I think I've spoken about on the show many times, but I'm not entirely sure that these trends, like these spikes in violent crime, these these things. They tend to be nationwide, and like Baltimore, since we're a small city of a population that's. But we are dwind- mighty. Huh? Well, we are small, but we are mighty. Right. Uh, with a dwindling population of people that actually live here because they want to live here, and the people that can't leave are stuck here. So there's a lot of crime going on in those communities. Uh, we are affected by the same nationwide trends as every other city in America. Uh, we tend to be worse because of all of those other factors. But the thing is, what I'm getting at is like, you you know, you can have the chief of police getting up and talking about new strategies and X, Y or Z. At the end of the day, a certain element of these numbers has nothing to do with them whatsoever. Right. Uh, Just cycles. It's about like the demand for a certain drug uh, and, and the competition that comes with it. So the answer to that is and the war on drugs. Um, and they really went into this on like in the free, first Freakonomics book. They talked a lot about that. Yeah, how like this the national trends and right and whatnot. So community policing to me, you know, if we're talking about the ideas of the person we're about to talk about, is a fantastic fucking idea. Uh, I disagree with the people that s- uh, say that we ought to dismantle the police department. And start from scratch because they're all fucked up and all bad. And I'm like, well, that's not true. Uh, demonstrably not true. I would say that the outcomes of this gun task trace force or whatever the hell it was called, totally fucked up. Yeah, those guys ought to be in prison. Um, and everybody else ought to, you know, know that. It's not okay. No, the day and age of corruption in the city of Baltimore, I don't care if it's schools Teachers, I mean, politicians, cops, all of it. We're like, coming for you. Fucking knock it off. We, need, we need to figure out a way to, like, really root out the... Batman. The cool- oh, I was going to say RoboCop! <laughs> no, 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 because... This- because we, we're, we're pretty old Detroit at this point. Yeah, we, we need OCP. There was a, uh, <laughs> a belated shout-out uh, to the new RoboCop comic that came out last week. Hmm. Really good. It's like RoboCop 10 years later. Cool. Anyway, I've gone way too long. Yeah, on next this story. Otherwise, quick. Or topic. should we just get to the? Our, but our I man. did. I did say that. No, I mean we're we're doing good at, on at time. At the end of the day, like, but this is good. Like, I, this actually makes no, this, me this happy. This is a good, good, good. It's one of the few. It's like, the good, good, good news good, good. articles coming like from the city itself, which is really good. When I, the city government, I should say. Uh, next topic. Hold on. Horseshoe Casino evacuated after fire in Guy Fieri's Baltimore Kitchen and Bar. Brian, make a joke. Oh, say it again? Guy Fieri, <laughs> Fire and Kitchen. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Started started by the fi- flames on his sleeves. Boom! <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> I had that lined yeah, up. That was, had that, that lined was, up. You should have did crickets. No. Oh, okay. Oh, what? That was pretty good. No, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> 
There's so much flavor, <laughs> hey, his shirt's on fire. Hey, fam zone, was that a or a check yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we don't need to talk about this story. Okay, I just want everyone to remember uh, the officially sanctioned city that breeds take on Guy Fieri as dictated by Richard yes, Gorelick. Richard Gorelick is, is he's a lovely man. He's a lovely man. We we don't really hate him so much. <laughs> yeah. All right, now the saga of... Also, Giada was in town this week. Did you guys see that? No, I did not. Oh, yeah, there were people t- <laughs> There were people taking pictures with Giada. Yo, Giada's got two great talents. A right one and a left one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Man, for being woke, Brian is... Uh... Yeah, yeah, he's an ally, but a pig. Well, everybody knows I don't really think she's got great tits. I do. Yeah, that's the crickets. <laughs> all right, an end to the Oztis saga. She's just more than that is all I'm saying. Gok, his, I don't know how to pronounce this name. G-O-K-H-A-N. Gokun? Gokun? It's Goku. 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 Goku Oztis <laughs> disappeared two weeks ago after jumping into the water in Fell's Point, evading police. Well, an unidentified body was found Thursday morning in the water near Broadway Pier in Fell's Point by the police. Uh, yeah. The the saga of Oztis has ended. He is not a member of Spetsnaz. He's, he's not Aquaman. He's just a dude who drowned. Right? Is it? A, so can I? I'm disappointed. Like, yeah, that's the way I feel in my in, in my heart. Like, there's a piece of me that wanted this like guy just to swim away and like yeah, like walk, climb up a ladder like the next pier over, and the cops are like, D- could you just? Oh, okay. No, like uh, uh, the Forrest Gump movie or music is playing and he's just furiously swimming away from them toward the Domino Sugar plant and the cops are just like, I got to give it to him. <laughs> that boy can swim. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently not. Uh, oh, well. Poor Ostis. He will be remembered not. In really. I will remember you. That should have been the bumper. Ostis, 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 you will you remember me? All right, that's me? enough. New York no. Invest... Oh, whoops, sorry, next topic. New York Investment Go- Bank Goldman Sachs considers involvement in Mondalmin Mall. Oh. That's good, right? It's unusual. So when... Uh, if you're an out-of-state listener, Mondalmin Mall is a mall that is in a... Not disadvantaged so area that had a Guys, if, a flagship store target which closed recently the mayor was if uh, you know at least your... laughed at for suggesting that the target would be an excellent location for a movie theater if you know your um chris rock it's the mall with uh shoe stores and baby clothes it's not even the mall that white people used to go to uh no it's terrifying <laughs> it's um where if, where the uh, the Baltimore riots kind of started. Yes, Do you remember remember my neighbor Roscoe? No. The one the 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 young man slash the young transsexual who lives upstairs. Who yes. lived upstairs yes. in my apartment. Yes. Uh, I used to go to Montauban with him. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Goldman Sachs is considering involvement in the mall. What what what, what sorts of things do you think that that GS stock sim- symbol will bring to the Bond Domino Mall? I don't know. A Gucci store? I don't know. Uh, American Apparel? No, they're out of business. Wait. American Doll. American Girl. <laughs> American Girl. American uh, Doll. Build a Bear. <laughs> Another Aunt Annie's. There's uh papyrus paper stores. Toys R Us. Now. Yeah, Toys R Us. You know what it's yeah. going to be? It's going to be nothing but liquidated Toys R Us stock. Are they are they going to have a, a supra, uh, underground rave <laughs> in the old Target? Like, what does like? I, I assume Goldman Sachs owns a piece of a lot of like retail. Like the, the, those kinds of places own like like pieces of retail. Right? All right, so we're we're making jokes, but well, Goldman Sachs did pledge a two two hundred thirty three million dollar investment in the Port Covington development, and they're saying. You know, uh, we we do have an impact investing arm that we're looking at, Mandalman Mall. So basically, they're gunning for tax breaks, like oh, it, cheap development. Yeah, but also, but, but you know what? Here's the thing that doesn't make me angry. I don't know a sh- anything about Goldman Sachs, right? Like I you know, don't. No, I, I don't, no triple ellipses. No, I <laughs> I do not. It's parentheses. Uh, I I I, know, yeah, 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 yeah. I know nothing about Goldman Sachs. No, I just don't. I know that like generally, like it's something that people are wary about and like 
big banks and, you know, money manipulation and shit like that. But if they're coming and saying, we're going to give money to poor Covington, which is, you know, in this up and coming, whatever, it's going to be great. But we're also going to give money to Mondamin. I'm not going to be like angry about that. I agree. And if the amount of money that they were willing to invest in that area was were equal. on par, yeah. I think people would be very excited about it. But there's no way it's going to equal two hundred thirty three million dollars. That's insane. No, but it, but I think twenty million is actually, you know, well for for a facility that already exists. Port Covington is mostly undeveloped. Right. They they need to do that two hundred thirty three million more than the Mondama needs needs that twenty million. Oh yeah, Mondama needs a cool twenty million. I I don't know how what is like twenty million a lot for a mall? Mm, probably not. What's so why are people how much do malls cost? Not okay. Or what not, is burn notice? <laughs> upset about um, putting a, a movie theater there. I, I, I it's just it's such a randomly weird thing. To I don't say. know. They put a Planet Hollywood where a mo- not Planet no, Hollywood. No, okay. Hollywood no, 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 no. I I know the echo chamber response why because target was like a much needed resource for goods for people okay. to go buy like okay. groceries and and clothing and a this, giant that and in that target space and would be so, way more important right than... uh and then replacing with a movie theater is just kind of like what but if it's a food desert at least now they have a place to popcorn. go get popcorn yeah and sodas <laughs> and, like uh, and a sour patch kids Ooh. please and, thank you and some, watermelon sour patch. i had them to this morning Casey. swedish fish no what Swedish fish. Not when there's sour patch ball. All right, next topic. <sighs> God. Oops. I was trying to stick to the Batman sound effect, but I accidentally hit the rock sound effect. That's okay. Northeast Baltimore woman arrested for child abuse after death of infant, comma, poisoned by enema. I feel like enemas are what? one of those, enemas are one of those things like uh, you know. I How do you poison a person with an enema? So is it a poison filled em- enema or a wa- or a water poisoning or something? Or like they got could par- have pu- punctured a periodontitis or something, or punctured the the intestines. Either way, that's a terrible story. That's less funny than I like to normally. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of jokes. Yeah, about dead babies. It's, it's just kind of crazy. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah, it's. I feel like that's the kind of abuse that a character in a st- serial killer. So apparently, novel- the person that gave the baby the enema. Was a caregiver, not uh-huh. necessarily the mother. Invest. Wait, did I say mother in the t- in the headline? Was the baby constipated? I don't know. It doesn't say. <laughs> yeah, it's not the mother. Yeah, you're right. It's Hello, mother. Anyway, the the uh, caregiver used a lubricant that contained lidocaine, which, as we all know, is an anesthetic. Ooh. Uh, but it can give babies heart attacks. <laughs> apparently. So, uh, apparently, that's what happened. So I, I just found that to be an unusual headline. It was pretty. Oh, this is terrible! Holy crap! I feel like enema is definitely a category on Pornhub. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Not like absolutely dead baby enemas, but that's probably on the dark web. Hey, you want to see some dead baby enemas? Go to no! the Butter Museum in Philadelphia. Oh I just, yes, I just ruined my day. <laughs> Reading the details of that case. All right, can we move on to the fun stuff about talking shit about some dude? Well, let's do Light City very, very shortly. Light City started. What is Light City? What is Light City? Uh, You know what? Year three of Light City, I feel like we know what Light City is now. Yeah, Light City is actually a really cool event that I'm happy is in this town. Light City is a thing. I'm going to be wandering around in it uh, during this week. I did not want to go yesterday because it was just too crowded. Is it? But when's the next nice day? I don't know. You do Possibly Wednesday. Even. Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm. Well, Tuesday I'm done work by about 7.45. So. Well, I got to host trivia, you know. Oh, right. Bro. Wednesday's definitely going to be good. But yeah, um, apparently there was some asshole who was, I mean, it was very crowded last night. And some asshole like went ahead and threw some fireworks out into the crowd and everyone thought it was a shooting. Well, apparently they also shouted gun. Right. Is the, what I was reading in some of the reports. Oh, that that is more than just that that got posted on the fam zone by Jeff Elkins. Well, was we, that what he? Thanks for the spoiler because that was a shut up. To okay. Jeff oh, Elkins, and we forgot to read a shout out to to Light City. Oh yeah, shout out. Are we shutting? We're, <laughs> well, Jeff Elkins said shut up to that guy. Well, we're saving it for the shut ups. Oh okay, but we're talking about it now. All right, we're done. So I need to give him credit because that is apparently where I read it. Okay, it was also on Reddit. Okay, dot cool. Com. Uh, all right, Dark final. Car. All right, let's get to it. The meat and potatoes, which uh, I guess we're going to have to spend at a minimum 15 to 20 minutes to 30 minutes possibly talking about this person. Well, 
The man's name is Michael A. Wood Jr. So this is a guy that you know, right? Did he reach out to you Eric once quote, upon no. a time? I think Dennis actually booked him for the show, but he was a former guest. Oh, hey, Dennis. Episode 113 of the CTB show, formerly known as the City of the Breeds podcast. He, uh, <laughs> he was a police whistleblower. Baltimore whistleblower. Former Marine, former BPD member who, yeah, I got on Twitter and started talking about uh, when after the riots in Baltimore – went on Twitter and just launched into a, here's all the fucking shit that I've seen Baltimore cops do to the citizenry of Baltimore and how fucked up it is. And everybody who was and still is in the activist community at that time uh, lauded him profusely. He extremely quickly wound up on, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast, our podcast, and a million other podcasts and TV shows even, including... The Young Turks. Well, so after, uh, because there's a step in between. After this Baltimore stuff, uh-huh. he got involved in the Dapple Pipeline. Right. No, no, he no, was no. also That's... on Slate as well. There was like a huge piece that Slate did with him. Right. Yeah. Either way, he was in the the zeitgeist. He was in the spotlight for sure, um, and you know was essentially touting the 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 reformation of most police forces to be community based uh a lot of the ideas that he was floating around like for instance having a word not new a not new but they were he was certainly being louder about them than most others and also was saying things about the baltimore police department that was not necessarily being publicized by anyone in the public for sure certainly not any other current or former police you know, officers. <clears throat> so fast forward about a year. This was 2015, and I think we interviewed him in that year. If I'm wrong, I don't know. But I'm going to republish that episode for everybody to uh, listen to, if you please. It was about two and a half hours. It was a very fine interview. Um, I wanted to dig out some clips, but I didn't have time. And also, I... I think there were at least two items that he did say that bumped me, and I don't quite remember what they are. One of them, however, I do remember was when I asked him almost immediately at the top of the show, I was like, look, if I if you're a cop in the city and I can give you a voucher that says that your child can go to any school in the city, hell, in the state, or no, I said in the city, I said, would that entice you to... Because as a cop, he was living in Shrewsbury, Pennsylvania, like a lot of the cops do. They don't live in the fucking city. And, uh, you know, I said, what incentives do you need you to, know, stay in, to stay in, in the, the city, to send your child to city schools? And his response was essentially, living in the city is not safe. I, you know, my daughter's not safe. So I'm out. And that was within the first, like, ten minutes of the episode. And I was kind of like, huh. Yeah, like... That's not a great thing, you know. It wasn't a great answer, but not a great answer. But at the when you take it in the the context of the whole, it's not like red flags are being thrown up. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, it, it just was sort of so. But he was so. But what what it drew a line in my brain regarding was that he is very pro police reformation, this and that and the other. But for all other intents and purposes, like he's a realist. Like he's not going to fucking you know, yeah. put his kid's life in danger in his perception by living in Baltimore and having her run around the neighborhoods and, you know, going to these schools or whatever and the quality of education, this and that and the other. It's a good boy. I did not remember that, but that, that, that was one of the main things I remembered. And then also talking about Kate Upton's tits. Uh, <laughs> wow. You know, what? You, I wonder if anybody found the, your, the podcast while they were doing research. So anyway, the reason we're into this right now is because the uh, high country news, uh, just which is a uh, news I I forget where it's out of. They did a big expose like profile yeah. on this guy. Yeah. Have you heard it, it, before we move on? Have you heard of this or this media before? No, High I, country I news. Yeah, never heard of. Them. I have to assume it's like the the Frederick Daily or something. It's mm. not like a, uh, Google it real quick. Like what? Uh, what I'm, is, I'm googling it. What right. is High Country News? Um, so it's for people who care about the West. So like anybody you know anybody else who is sort of you know spouting interesting ideas about baltimore and policy and you got your d rays and you got your michaels and you got your all these other guys like um 
I wound up sort of losing track of him, and then occasionally would see some tweets coming out of him that seemed a little interesting. Real quick, yes. they're my kind of people. High Country News is a nonprofit and independent media organization that covers the important issues and stories that defines the American West. They're, they're my kind of fucking people. Okay. Sounds great. Um, and then at one point, you know, because it, for probably a year and a half after we had him on the show, he was continuously tweeting about how he wanted to be the chief of police in XYZ city. And everyone was backing him on these ideas. Cause he had like, you know, community policing was his thing. And, uh, and then one day, like, I don't know how this happened, but I, I saw him getting into it with somebody else arguing about, um, how race does not exist. And it's something that I've kind of mentioned on the show that we're all the human race. Right. So it doesn't matter whether you're white, black, Asian, etc. Yeah. We are the human race, and that he's saying that race, as we understand it, as we consider it, is a social construct, cultural, whatever. And I, re- I immediately remembered on another episode where I mentioned we've got culturalism, we've got classism, and we've got some of these other isms that all form. It, it all bakes into it's like the bigotry. Captain Planet of yeah. racism. <laughs> Title of the episode: oh. Captain Planet of Racism is good, it's but good. I don't know. But I want to award it to Casey. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get. I still have to give it to him. Tail Diggs. But Captain Planet of Racism is really good. It's really good. And uh, I, it could I'm be. Not... It could be like uh, the Hobbit or an <laughs> Journey. Like... Yeah, colon or Tail Diggs or <laughs> <laughs> Captain Planet of Racism. So here's the question. All right, did I actually come up with the episode? No, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, and, uh, I think the hallmark of, of this, so, you know, of his personality tends to be, I'm, I'm unapologetic about Aggrandizement. My... Right. Sort of like, uh, no, you know, I'm right. Like, you're yeah. wrong. And if you disagree with me, I'm just, I'm out. I am enlightened. Woke, uh, in more ways than one, because, you know, I, that was like before that was a thing. I too. did notice that throughout the, the months and i'll just say months like it's not years it's like three years and it's technically years but months extended months uh continuously talked about how he's getting a doctorate and blah 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 and i'm like all right dude you know people who are getting a doctorate don't have time to talk to tweet about it this much uh but the bottom line is there are two sort of stories that have been run and one of them just came out this past friday about how and i complete this fell completely off my radar but he uh went from community policing to essentially organizing a bunch of veteran people to f- go fight the Dakota Access Pipeline. I don't know if I call it organizing, Bob. Right. So uh, essentially the gist of the article, and if you want to read it, it is on uh, hcn.org. We should put a link in the show notes. Well, the extended show notes page will absolutely have a link to this. And it's but... and you can find it on the fam zone. Yeah, just Google cashing in on Standing Rock. To be fair, this is this was brought to us by the Fam Zone. That is very true. The Fam Zone Extreme. <laughs> Thanks, Fam Zone. You're my best friends. <laughs> uh, essentially, they're more than friends. They're fam. they're fams. <laughs> it details how uh, a a GoFundMe was started to essentially get a bunch of veterans together to go to this is North Dakota. The, yes. Okay. Bye-bye. Wherever. The Dakotas. The Standing Rock. For the Standing Rock The Standing Rock thing. Hey, remember that? Dakota Access uh, Pipeline. Pipeline. Um, And the the focus was essentially to enable veterans through these donations to travel to Standing Rock to fight the the, the Dapple. And uh, I hate that it's called Dapple. Because Dapple's a nice horse name. And like, Dapple. The, yeah, you know. Dapple loves apples. <laughs> and also oats. Sometimes I like to give him apples. A jolly rancher, and it's really funny because horses have these big tongues, and they just like juggle the jolly rancher around in their giant tongues. This seems super fucking specific. What is that? What? I don't know. I feel like <laughs> that felt real to me. No, it's... Dude, this is that was amazing improv. That felt thank real you, to... Brian. That felt thank real you. to me. Yes, and sorry, Brian. Uh, Casey, uh, the High Country News. Not only did they did, not only did they put out the one article, mm-hmm. they have several supporting articles, including one with just like all the data yeah. that they were able to compile. Oh no, no, uh, it's a real so live news organization. Let's, let's, let's all right, let's do this. Okay. okay, so to get to the bare buck fucking bones, this dude comes off as a goddamn lunatic 
in this article post uh, Standing Rock. He steals all the money. He is in no way able, Casey, he is in no way able to organize any of the protests. He and him and this like homeless guy and maybe a couple of other people who seemed a little nicer to him just absconded with like a million fucking dollars. Um, 1.4. Sort of. I mean, that's Brian's like very sort of. (laughs) I'm paraphrasing. Hyperbolic (laughs) description of the situation. But it's not. Yeah, a little bit. That wasn't hyperbolic. All that shit was in that article. But and you're, then, you're you're doing the fake news version. Yeah, of it. Uh, no, I'm doing like the, you know, like the summary. hot take version. Yeah, the hot take version. So add to this, uh, like, so there was this GoFundMe account. A whole bunch of people put uh, up to a million dollars in a GoFundMe. account. I think account, the most telling thing, of- and the GoFundMe account went to. His, his bank account. His bank account. He is where, but that is that is standard operating procedure. Well, it has to go to a bank account, right? At the time, they did not have a nonprofit set up. They did not have any sort of organization so, okay. set up. So here's what so I took away from the article. Somewhere. The question is not whether or not whether or not Michael A. Wood did something illegal, and the answer is maybe. He, the, no, the, he did not. He the, did. Okay. The, the point, the the point is, he like, acted like a dickhead. Acted like a dickhead for sure because his his comment when people were essentially saying, I donated to you like $250 to help these veterans do this and that and the other. His it, response it, was, oh, this was not a donation. You it, were just giving me money. Yeah, it wasn't that, a cha- – no, there's a di- di- distinction. His quote was, it was not a charity donation because there was no charity. Right. It was I, donated I to made him, the charity. But, and but then that he being took said, that money and then made a charity. The GoFundMe page did not say uh, – Give money to Michael, to Michael A. Wood's bank account. It was. It said, "Give money to veterans. Stand up or stand up veterans or I forget what the organization called. It doesn't matter. Don't fucking exist no more because it was a sham. Like this guy is a shyster. This guy like took advantage but, of a situation. I'm not, so I, I would stop short of calling him that. Why? Simply because what's he done? I think. Well, let me do this. Uh, uh, I, I I sort of envision him as a very reactionary, very uh, mercurial individual who got fired up about this Dapple thing, saw an opportunity to organize all these other veterans like him with other people. It wasn't you don't just get him. To, hold you don't on, get to hold, walk. I'm not fucking, okay, I'm not okay. done. And then was immediately like, "All right, we got to do something. All right, we're gonna we're gonna set up this GoFundMe. Okay, we're all gonna go there and we're gonna fight these assholes, you know, that are blasting these people with with hoses and you know and and look at these all these 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 capitalist assholes doing this thing. And then once he set up the thing and people started funneling money into it, it was like, uh oh. And then all these thousands of people started to get interested. He's like, uh oh. And when, then and, tried to sort of be like, well, and apparently he wasn't even the, air quote, leader. That's, yeah. And everyone looked to, to him as the leader because of his previous sort of like, I'm not going to use the word grandstanding. His uh, status. Lower G grandstanding, yes. His status as like a thought person and somebody who's been in the spotlight and is clearly jockeying to be a a uh, figurehead in some capacity, right? So then it turns out that... And the other guy, like, just would disappear. Well, whatever it is, yeah. I mean, but it, as it turns out, like, he doesn't necessarily have training in the logistics. land of leadership and logistics and planning a huge uh, uh, protest movement and, and but reimbursing all of these veterans who were flying to North Dakota from God knows where and showing up at an airport with a receipt... And just handing it to whoever it was that looked like they were in charge and saying, where's my, my travel voucher, you know? And, and, and then – but after that, he bought himself shit with that money. He did. So th- th- that's where I'm getting to like with this. He like realized, you're not allowed to fail at something and then walk with a million dollars. He probably realized he was out of his league, wouldn't admit it, will not admit it, and counteracted with, no, no, no. I did all this stuff. Look at what I did do. Not what I couldn't handle, or I apologize for all this crap that happened, and also spent sixty grand moving his his daughter and wife to a condominium in California. Uh, oh, and that homeless guy, and, which which he claims the organization, which like the board, which was like four people approved, 
but supposedly they had no clue what he was doing. I, I I guarantee there were there were no articles of organization. There was nothing. There was just like emails flying back and forth, like, "Hey, I'm going to authorize ten thousand dollars to spend on this thing," and then bleh, he did it anyway because all the money is in his account. Yeah. Who, there's no oversight. There's no like barrier it, it, to him just buying a fucking Dugatti. It's there's his nothing. money, and there's no way around it. And he's legally entitled to the money it until sucks. somebody sues him for it. And no one's going to. And no one's going to. Because it's been cute. over a year after the fact, and no one's getting, like, these veterans don't have the power to file a class action lawsuit to get their money back. I think most of them got something back regardless. Uh, the bottom line is, like, he doesn't come out looking great and has been very diminished in sort of the public spotlight. He deleted his, his Twitter. His and now some kid owns it, you said? Twi- yes. <laughs> okay, so I was doing a little digging around on his own website. It's uh, Michael A. Wood Jr. dot net, where he's, you know, it's a, basically an about me uh, website. And there is a link to his Twitter account, which is at Michael A. Michael A. Wood Jr. But if you click on it, it goes to this, like, young man <laughs> whose, whose Twitter bio is aimed to travel all around the world. And his profile photo is him doing a bathroom selfie. Hmm. Um, so that yeah, has... he definitely deleted that because it was, it was um... well, somebody else slipped in and took the handle. Yeah, well, he, he was verified too. Like it was that's no small feat. Yeah. Um, he apparently is still active on Instagram, although I can't remember when the last time he actually posted. Uh, um, but he, and then I believe his well, Facebook I just I just is... clicked on it right now and he posted. It was kind of recently. Okay, so uh, this is the other thing. All right, bottom line is like. He doesn't come off great in this whole situation, and I would argue really terrible, actually. And uh, sort of strikes me as a guy who really, really wanted to elevate himself into, like, the TV talking head world Hmm. and was maybe ill-prepared to do so and then was scrambling to figure out something to do in terms of how do I remain relevant, how do I do this and that and the other. And this, you know, this fucking pipeline thing was like, Everyone's dogpiling in, and he had absolutely no idea how to handle the situation. And then walked away with some money, um, which now, and to Brian's point, like yeah, there was there was funds that were used for him to establish a home base. In, was it L.A.? No, and... no, 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 no. He is. So I I did a little more research, and by that I just mean clicking around on his website. Uh, he is. In hold on one second. Well, okay. While you're looking that up, I, I think here's the other thing. So this guy comes forward as a whistle, as a police whistleblower. Holy shit! And, and people jump to be like, "Oh, check out this information," and they assume that he's on air quotes our side. Evan is jumping up and down. The truth of the matter, he wasn't on our side. He's the guy who wants to be fucking famous. I he doesn't give a shit about. Anything. I am jumping up and down because I discovered his YouTube page. He he's started publishing these videos that are that are basically just podcasts. I'm sorry, that was just some audio from his podcast. But he is now in the Sonoran Desert. And uh, the caption on this first video is entitled, Digital Media Rising from the Sonoran Desert, www.imembermedia.com. That is a URL that does not have a web page. After being prominent in the media, why I am moving away from it and into monologue and critical self-reflection on my own arguments. In other words, I have been shunned. And now I'm doing my own thing. When is that dated? Uh, April 14th, 2018. So yesterday. Yes. Which is, so the day after. That's when it was published, but he probably recorded it like. Two days ago. But yes. But if all falls in line where this article yes, was published this article Friday. comes out and he's like, well, you know what I'm doing? I'm moving away from the media. I'm doing my own thing. Um, he has a uh, 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 another video entitled. Blocked, muted, unfriended, unfollowed, and unsubscribed into ignorance. This audio that you're hearing is the video of his. And the title of the thing, the graphic is entitled The Morning Blunt. Holy. Oh, is he getting high? I have to imagine that he is. (sighs) He did talk in. So there's a light bulb with a little sun behind it, a whole lot of weed leaves, and then some coffee beans on the graphic. He oh. definitely talked about some of that. Getting Just, some ganja. Yeah, oh. yeah well, I, don't, well, I don't remember that. But uh, I do specifically remember. You that. know what? F this guy. Um, Marijuana's not cool, kids. But here's the, here's the one that he just posted. 
This was literally three hours ago. It's entitled Race is Not Real, but Racism Is. Woo, that's deep. It I sounds like some middle schooler, like... Uh, you know, it sounds like a really douchey kid. He just took his first Philosophy 101 class. You know, Brian, you I know, hate to agree with you. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that, like, yeah, like, yeah, he just seems terrible. Like, fuck him. He's a 19-year-old kid who just, like, he's, like, the worst kind of PC you woke, you know? Like, right. the worst. But he's probably also, like, Randian. I'm sure he's, like, objectivist or something. Fuck. Oh no, he claims to be postmodern. I don't know what that means. He identifies with Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you know who that, know who that no, is. No, I don't. That? He's a Canadian intellectual who's actually if objectively smarter than all of us combined. Okay, yeah. Like that's not hard for me to now, like admit. Here's the thing. Um I, so this one is entitled TMB with C squared. What the fuck? The morning blunt with oh, C squared. Oh, it is the morning. <laughs> Why? Come on, guys, Why? get with it. I don't do letters well. Get with it. Well, all right, fine. I mean, is that enough? What, we... what is C squared? C squared. I don't know. Uh, it's C4's brother. Ooh. <laughs> it's his nephew. It's his nephew. Uh, okay. Are we done? Uh, yeah, enough of this guy. Fuck him. Well, <laughs> no, like, I'm, ha- I'm happy we... that we were on the vanguard of, like, his downfall. That's no... I... <sighs> Please. We had nothing to do with it. We had basically everything just kind of slipped into sub- obscurity, but with, like, a... With a with an ast- or like a, a, a Like a hallmark, hey, this is where that guy went. And you he was you guys don't show. think it's fun to be, like... Like to part like, like story? see this guy's, like, downfall and be like, Brian, I was part Brian, of it. Brian, this is not the show. In which we dunk on people? Yeah, okay. it is. I fucking Part? hate that phrase, by the way. Dunk when on when fucking I'm gonna like, dra- I'm gonna drag l- my balls across when this lift, this leftists face. are like, look, man, I'm not trying to dunk on your values, but you know, you're just not like thinking about it in the right way. Blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. So, but the, but the final thought, I guess, about I li- this whole thing. Ooh, Casey's is, final thought. New uh, segment. You know what? Fine. You know what? After this, th- we're done. We're done. This is it. Just be Casey's careful. final thought. Go. Be careful who you're giving money to on this GoFundMe stuff. Because, yeah, you don't know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but it's a true. Fucking true as a fucking It is generally unregulated. Like, yeah, I mean, like, there there are explicit <laughs> warnings on no, GoFundMe. These like, people legitimately fell for, like, the oldest uh, old people scam. Like, well, uh, give money to this charity. Look, and then, like, take it a run. Which R- make it out cha- the cash. Which one wasn't a charity. Two wasn't a nonprofit. And three... In their terms of service, GoFundMe puts the responsibility on you, you to, as, the as, donor. as the donor. It's a check made out the cash. Correct. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, hey, remember, hey, remember Comey? Yeah. <sighs> Whatever happened to that guy? <sighs> yeah. People were like buying the T-shirts, throwing money at this fucker. I'm Who, not. I'm not reading his book. He has a book. About, you're talking about Coney. Coney. What did I say? Comey. Yeah, oh. Like <laughs> no, 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 no. Not Coney. the former. Oh, right. And then, he, and then he was uh, no, the, the Coney guy. Yeah. And then he was running down the street jerking off. Yeah, he lost his fucking mind, um, which I guess. Will... I thought you meant James Comey, who no, also no, no, ran no. down the street yeah, jerking yeah. off. No, but <laughs> it's a very accurate statement. I mean, the part where he was he was in a state of delirium masturbating on the sidewalk. Like, I guess, you know, been there. Some people some people react to instant fame. In different ways, Wait, but that, the the, the uh, warlord. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the guy who made the the like the documentary about Coney. Oh, okay. Uh, where you know this guy basically recruits child soldiers to be his bodyguards. So you're, you're talking about the guy who made the documentary. Who made the documentary the and then subject. essentially put it on YouTube and it went instantly. Vi- it was like one of the first. Yeah, you remember Coney Coney 2014 or it whatever was 2012, it was. 2012, I think. Coney yes. 20, oh. it was 12, 12, 2012. Um, but that was like one of the first like social justice. Warrior things that everyone started sharing all over Facebook and don't throwing money at, and meanwhile he you know, died. Like but, Coney himself had died like three years. But the prior. thing is, is like no one found him. But if you're if you're the guy who put that documentary together and people are just like giving you money and being like, please get rid of Coney, I'm like, uh, what do you How? want me to do? Hire an assassin? Like, what what am I supposed to do? Like, go before the UN and hand them a pile of money and this and that and the other. It's just absurd to me. I mean, and getting back to this guy, Michael, like, you know, I, Why think, was... the, I think the insidious thing was like the initial budget was a quarter of a million bucks, right? And then he bumped it up. Maybe if... And then he bumped it up. Maybe and if then he so... bumped it up. I, I think what we're, we're all saying is maybe if some guy says, hey, give me money to do this, 
fucking down. Yes, the perception is sorry. Sorry, you, you deserve. But no, I only. But we're done because Casey had his final. He word. did have his final word. That has been Casey's final word. Ba, 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 ya, ba. And it is now time to get a little angry. Uh. Time to get a little venti. Remember when we were talking about Kevin Smith at the beginning? I was like, ah, what I'm going to do instead of say 20, I'm going to say 37. <laughs> Try not to suck any ventis on your way to the parking lot. Yes, exactly. Mm. Time to get a little pissed off here. <clears throat> time to get a little cat. <clears throat> time, to get, <laughs> time to get a little fearful for your life. <clears throat> time to get a little dead. They tell it. <gasps> <laughs> that was me, guys. <laughs> Time to get a little amorous. I love it. I love it. I love it. Time to get a little confused. Uh, Time to get a little... Somebody throw me. Throw one at Wilhelm me. Wilhelm scream. No, I already did that. Oh. Time to get a little... What, Casey? Come on. Come on. Uh, confused? Smash TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Time to go right in and tell everyone to shut up. We gonna let the band deal with this. <laughs> In my oh, yeah! Okay, this is the end of the show in which we give uh, persons, places, and things that are lowering our quality of life. <laughs> shut up. My shut up this week. <clears throat> On my way back from Philadelphia yesterday, I was passing through the Lexington Market area. It made me very sad because I had just returned from the Reading Terminal Market, which is objectively a finer market. This is not my shut-up. It is not to the Lexington Market, but from the amount of fucking garbage that is just flying around in the streets surrounding the area. There are hundreds of people just walking around that seem to be very comfortable with the amount of trash that they are literally wading through on the sidewalks and in the streets. I don't understand the mentality of the person who literally couldn't give a fuck about their own surroundings, but please shut up to that mentality, and can we, for the love of God, do something to improve it in the future? If you see a piece of litter, pick it up. Yeah, yeah. only you can prevent litter fires. Trash ball, this trash ball. You guys didn't listen to the bumper last week, did you? I did. All right, well, both of you are off the show. No, I listened to the whole show. I just uh, don't remember what the bumper was. It was uh, William Donald Schaefer's Trash Ball. I did listen to that. Okay, thank you. Casey? I got two. I listened to the whole show last week. The, the first I one week. is uh, to traffic. When you are going to any large event and you are in traffic, it is generally discourteous to fucking cut the line by a massive amount and then just try to wedge yourself oh, in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- wait, on an exit ramp, how far do you take it? I do love these traffic-based shut-ups that we've been having lately. I take it because you take it to the end of the... You're supposed to take it to the end and then merge in. So what, are you saying you have to start getting in as soon as you can? I, no, I take it to the end. I take I, it to the end. What I'm saying is I take that it to the end. if, like on Saturday, the line is through the tunnel, you don't go in the other lane... And then try to just cut in yeah. on the exit yeah. while everybody's in line. That is just and the an absolute asshole. worst are those dickheads. Shut up to those dickheads that when you're stuck in traffic, and like let's just say they have an exit. zipper, they have an exit. Well, zipper obviously, <laughs> but there's an exit. Zipper. Shut up. There's a there's a exit. You know, let's say two miles up the road, and they're just like, fuck it, I'm gonna drive on the shoulder for the entire two miles. No, I'm gonna block your ass. I'm pulling over into the shoulder, and you're not going anywhere, Yeah, two miles is too much. Yeah. Right. Whatever. <laughs> two miles is a light. But if, what you give, have to be an eye. You have to be, you have to be able to see it. What gives me a smug level of glee is when an asshole like that will do that, drive up the uh, shoulder, and then immediately get stuck because there's an emergency vehicle like parked on the side. I like it when I roll over the rumble strips because it makes my butt feel good. That's gross. Right. I don't Thanks. ever want to think about your butt. And then my other shut up yes. is to Comey, not Aww. Coney, not Coney, to Comey. Comey 2018. Yeah. Um, you know how everyone, you know, Casey, I agree. I, he, go, go. He had, you had an opportunity to have an objective look and at the, the, the situation in our political atmosphere right now. And instead of, you know, retaining your credibility, you resorted to personal attacks and now just shredded everything. Either way, it's amazing how he absolved himself. I won't read the fucking book. I read enough 
I've heard, I've read enough, and I've heard enough podcasts. He absolves himself of any guilt. Fuck you, James Comey. You picked the president. Add to that, you know what I hate, Casey? What do you, you know how everyone, like, at the end of the election, like, when people would say, like, oh, go away, Hillary Clinton, go knit, go do all mm-hmm. that shit? Who's saying that to fucking James Comey? And it's all his fucking fault. It's all his fault. It's not his fault. It's his fault. It is not his fault. <laughs> Shut up, Casey. There's a lot of faults. Mm. All right, there's been shut up. I didn't get mine. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I think Evan just gave another one. <laughs> um, shut up to death. While doing this show, I learned that R. Lee Ermy died. Oh, no. Star of oh, Full Metal Jacket. No. Saving Silverman. Oh, no. Uh, 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 everyone's uh, uh, uh. favorite drill sergeant. And one of my what? F- no. Yeah. One of my favorite shows, Mail Call. Oh, great show where uh. he does where he like answers like military questions. Yes. He's he was on an X Files episode. He's like he was a guy who got the joke. I'm a fan of his. Yes. He was the consultant for Full Metal Jacket, and he yeah. was so good that they were like, you're in the movie. That was, uh, he and imp- that was the start it, of his career. It was all ad-libbed. There was no script for him. He just did it. I, was he the he, – he was the person who, like, introduced – suck? no, what was it? Suck a Go- golf, golf ball through a garden hose. He didn't in- – he introduced that phrase to me. Yeah, right. Here's the thing. Here's my problem. I like to do Lou Gossett Jr.'s dialogue from uh, I'd have a certain gentleman like Robert E. Uh, like all, 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 R. Lee Ermey. Like, Robert E. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think it's what? You don't think it's Robert Lee Ermey? Robert. Oh, no. <laughs> no. His name is R. Lee Ermey. All right. What stop. do you think his name right. is? Keep going. We're but, running but, out like, of time. Yeah. But either way. Thanks, thanks, Arlie Army. You, you were in lots of good movies, like Sam Silverman. We're gonna like add that, right? Huh? We're gonna have to add some clips of that, right? Yeah, I'll put them on the back end. Back end. Yeah, cool. Yeah, he had like a Saigon horror wife, like for real. Good. Yeah, totally awesome. Anyway, I'm sure that's not the fur nomenclature, but she was a Saigon <laughs> prostitute, <laughs> sex worker. I'm pretty sure Chinaman is not the preferred nomenclature. We're, we are sex positive here. Uh. Also friendly to the Orientals. <laughs> All right, that's my job. Okay, Good. So oh, okay, me so horny. Oh, oh me so horny. I love it. All right. That has been episode 225. We're only two episodes away from the exclusive 227 episode where we will talk about 227. 227. The show. Oh, Marla Gibbs and Jack A. Yeah. And Sherman Helmsley. Was he on that show? Uh, no, he was not. He was on Amen. Oh. And Let's just Jefferson. pretend he was on 227. Okay. We'll write some uh, fan fiction in which he is on 227. <laughs> I like saying 227. Casey, I didn't hurt your feelings today when I said we were like the Phoebe and the Ross. So uh, Evan was like, hey, let's walk down to the podcast. That, I'm was, like, that was before I realized that it was, it was really pouring. gross out. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Uh, I like, besides, I like Casey picks me up after work. I like spending time with Casey. Uh, I said we are the Phoebe and the Ross, two friends, like two friends that don't have any storyline right. together. And I almost fell out of my chair laughing. <laughs> and then I showed that to my wife, and she almost did the same. So, but in in a way, like I mean, Brian and I hang out all the, a lot, but I don't hang out with Casey that much. Historically, we used to hang out a lot, but now he doesn't even live in the city, so it's not like we're not Ross and Phoebe. Hmm. But maybe we're like Joey and Gunter. No, see, here's the th- oh, <laughs> yeah, but so, but but then then Joey. I mean, I'm, I, I almost called Casey Joey. Then Casey's uh, the Gunther because he's so far out. Because like everyone hangs out, but he's like busy like making babies in the county, <laughs> being a normal human. Being. Yeah, being an adult. <laughs> All right, that is any final thoughts. Casey you already had yours. Uh, Brian, do you any final thoughts? You know it. Never mind. No Be final good thoughts. to each other. Yeah. I'm excellent. Jerry Springer. <laughs> As we go off into this world, don't fuck your stepmother. Be good to each other. Do you have bad nice. credit? Liberty, Liberty Financial will get you a car. So my grandfather was the. He was I. He might have been Liberty Motors lawyer, or he was like Liberty Motors rival lawyer, and he obsessively watched those infomercials and took who, notes. Who does who does Jerry Seinfeld know in the Jerry Springer? To, I'm sorry, 
<laughs> yes, Jerry Springer. Who does Jerry Springer know in the Reisterstown Nothing. area? They just, pay, they just started paying him in the 90s. Who who knows? James Slocum. How does James who Slocum does, get yeah, Shatner? Who, how does Shatner know Slocum? I think you just pay him. Shatner's Denny Crane. You pay him. He's the Michael Caine of no, commercials. Denny, no, Denny Crane. Remember when do you he know was what on I'm the saying when I say the Michael Caine of commercials? He'll, he'll do everything? Y- yes. Yeah, sure. That could be a title of the episode. But no, no, not as good as Captain Planet Racism. Tail Dicks. And Tail Dicks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for being a fan. Thank you for being a friend. We drank good. I think we did that whole Natty Lake uh, 15er. Did we? With yeah. Now there's... How many are left? Dose. Two? I did my five. I've only done four. Mm, so you guys suck. All right. Well... I'll do those later because I got. I'm gonna go to trivia. Oh, have fun! I will. You guys gotta go. Yeah, Caitlin's gonna be here any second. If no. we can get this done well, before she gets here, I will win. Well, two weeks in a row. I know. All right, have a great day and a better tomorrow. Bye.